Getting the finer details. Yeah. <laughs> he was just cleaning oh, right. his bit shining his cup. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not weird at all, Eagle. <laughs> Morning, darling. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Oh God, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> you had me worried this morning. You had me really worried. So, so, so uh, I'm getting into the car park and, and Zion calls me and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. Why? <laughs> well, Sam just called me. Um, and he's checking on you because he's not heard from you. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. Um, check my phone. Oh, it's on Do Not Disturb. Six missed calls from Sam. <laughs> <laughs> missed call from Merle. I was, I was talking to Merle. I go, right, okay, worst case scenario, right? I just have to do this by myself. I've got, I've got this. We've done enough of it. I know what I'm doing. I can do it. Got but this in the back. It's never going to be the same. It's no. never going to be the same. <laughs> but you're here. You're here. You're here. The elusive uh, eagle, Denver. Oh, indeed, indeed. So, before we get into today's episode, just a little bit of house admin because we've got an audience here again today. Whoop, whoop, whoop. No, hold on a second. Hold okay. on. Oh, we've nice. got an audience here today. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Honestly, guys. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <coughs> they can walk <coughs> as well. So, come on. <laughs> We've got an audience here today, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of house admin. If anyone needs to go to the toilet, you don't need to put your hand up, okay? You're allowed to just get up and go to the toilet. Um, there's, no, there's no planned fire alarm. There's one exit. So if the alarm does go off, we're going that way. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is also a pack of double deckers in the fridge. They are off limits. If anybody <laughs> has one of my double deckers, you're going to be in serious trouble. That you can is have that. the beer. You can have the prosecco. Yeah, we bought the beer. We've got we've got crackers for everybody. Um, it's feeling festive, isn't it? Yeah. We've had Christmas tunes on this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited? I am very much. So the Christmas the... tree is up in the house, and yeah, the girls are loving their advent calendars. And yeah. Good. Yeah. The hours have got bath bomb advent calendars bath this year. Bombs. Bath bombs, yeah. Bougie. Yeah. <laughs> very, very middle class. Bath very nice. <laughs> very middle class. Betsy, yeah. Betsy. Um, the they've got chocolate ones as well. Yeah. You know, standard, isn't it? Um, Igor, who are we? Should we do the intro thing? <laughs> I was saying to him earlier today, I was like, I feel like we just need to sort out what we say at the beginning. Because I kind of forget that there are new people joining all the time mm-hmm. and listening. And we just go straight in and end yeah, up yeah, chatting yeah. and then go, oh shit, we haven't done the, we haven't done the little the blurb at the start that yeah. says, hey, this is what we are. Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. Do you want to do it? We are Another Idea, a podcast for creators and entrepreneurs that want to level up their business. And here we are. And what do people need to do, Igor? Please do the clickety thing. Clickety thing. (laughs) And share, subscribe. And yeah, those are the things that really help us grow. And we wouldn't be here. We sound like a broken record when we say it. We we genuinely say it all the time. we, We need those because we're trying to grow this. We're doing it. We've done it for, this is almost a year of recording now. Yeah. We're 32, 33 episodes in. Yeah, six months. Um, we have, we've missed one week. Yeah. Um, we've made, um, well, almost no money from it. That's why we haven't made any money. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we've lost I know money. We've had, well, we, we actually have. If you, if you looked at the sheet, yeah, we've, we've lost money. Um, but we're, we're doing it because we believe in something that's uh, much bigger than just you know, oh, yes. a financial reward. Yes. And we love doing it. So hopefully, yeah, the least that people can do is just share it. Yeah. It costs them nothing, does it? <laughs> you know, maybe a little Spotify subscription, but what's that? You know, little share. Um, and it's the Christmas episode today. We've got a couple of guest speakers in. I've been looking forward to this one. I don't know about you. Well, they, they've been on the list for a little while. Yeah, for a long time. Long, um, long time. I think, we, I think we spoke to them after about episode two or three. Yeah, and we're yeah, like, very Can much you so. guys come on? Yeah, very much yeah. so. Um, I've already got the names mixed up this morning. Well, <laughs> so I called, I called, I called, Great start. I called Wonderful Cash. start. We I called are Cash. To be, to be fair, you could just fair, call us Cash. I was, yeah. I, was, I was in that like sort of buzz of getting everything set up and my mind had just gone, it had just yeah. gone AWOL. Yeah, you do, you do that. You get in your sort of like, yeah. Sam I'm, I'm already mind. worried that I've not done something. No, no, it's cool. Just, just settle in, so, just settle in. So settle in. Cat, Cat and Ash of the Springles are here. Yeah, Hello. come on. Hey guys. Thanks so much <laughs> for having us. Honestly, Cat and Ash from the Springles are here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if we deserve that. <laughs> no. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, thank you so much for coming. Because I've come quite a way. Yeah. Literally all the way down from down south. From Cornwall. Cornwall. Yeah. Cornwall. Wow. Five and a half hours on a train. <laughs> yeah. And uh, No stops, though. No stops. So it was straight, straight through. Amazing. Straight through. Yeah, terrible I didn't even know that train existed. 
but Wi-Fi, just yeah. really, really bad Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it's yeah. like being in 2001 yeah. on dial-up, yeah. but at least you can get on the internet. I bet, I bet your productivity was sky high, though. I entered <laughs> a full wedding on the train. <laughs> and Amazing. I did deal with a full-scale customer meltdown via WhatsApp, so you know, at least <laughs> you, you can get stuff done. Yeah. But, you, you know, you had a break for the kids. Yeah. Yeah, You've had a break exactly. for the kids. Yeah. You've had a date night in a Premier Inn hotel. Yeah. Exactly. We don't need to go into. Only the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, what did you have? What did you have to eat in the end? I know we were st- we, Monday. Monday nights are always difficult, aren't they? TGI Fridays. Ten, did you? Yeah. yeah we literally just sat on the bed and ate TGI Fridays, like watching the TV. Life. The life. The like dream. teenagers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was what were you watching on telly? What was the? We actually choice? watched. Uh, we had Channel Four on. Actually, ended up watching um, Escape to the Chateau. You know the <laughs> yeah. DIY, oh, oh. <laughs> which is quite nice. We oh, I was meant to be there, there a couple year. of times. I was meant to be yeah. there. I was meant to be there for a wedding. It's, it's good. Lovely. It's really, really nice. No, it's, it's been cancelled. Okay. Lucky enough to do um, their Sorry. Palladium Awkward. show last year. Okay. They, like photograph their Palladium show. They are like oh, wow. such lovely driven people. If you get them on the podcast, that would be amazing. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. You're going to introduce yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Luke, yeah. Let's not talk about you guys. Let's talk about people that come on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, as I was saying, uh, I've been wanting to have you guys over for, for quite a long time because first of all, just within the wedding industry, you guys... Um, your name gets mentioned so so many times over the years. <laughs> Does it? Yes, yes. They, make quite, they make quite sexy work. Yeah, yeah, really that, sexy. Work. <laughs> really sexy work. Yeah. So, I mean, coming from you like, guys, that's a what are we doing here? <laughs> Why do they want to talk to us? <laughs> we were just really desperate for speakers. We, yeah. Just, yeah. we, yeah. we were looking to fill it somehow. We were looking to fill it. Literally, yeah. Yeah. Jenny Peterson could have come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's scrape the barrel. I thought maybe it's because obviously you're married to Zion. Our daughter's called Zion. Yeah, I thought that's probably it. Really, yeah, yeah. But no, you guys are um, absolutely incredible. Your work is incredible. And then to top it all off, you, you just start a whole other business. <laughs> side hustle of side hustles. That we're going to get into. But it's just absolutely incredible. So, yeah. Thank you, mate. I said to Sam, we kind of like, we have to. We have to have you guys. It's, it's, over, taken, so. it's taken about four or five months, hasn't it, to get yeah. our diaries yeah. to line up. But we've yeah. got there. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a crazy year. And I mean, imagine be, the diary it's situation gonna be, on yeah. this It's going to be totally <laughs> worth it. It's going to be totally worth it. Yeah. But yes, tell us tell us a bit about you guys. What do you do? Literally from your own words, really, and and we can go from there. Okay. Um, so I'm Kat and he's Ash. And we're wedding photographers. Um, collectively, we're the Springles, and then we also have our uh, other business, Able Burners, which is a like a home diffuser brand. And we're also, most importantly, parents to five-year-old twins, Zion and Vega, who are with Nanny and Granddad at the Magnificent moment. names. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, we, yeah, obviously got that in common. <laughs> um, she's the only other girl we know called Zion, actually. Yeah, usually it tends to be it's guys, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Name, yeah. And Americans. Yeah, yeah. in the Caribbean, well, we they're like, everyone's <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't like it, because when she goes to the Caribbean, they're like, Zion! And she's like, I'm, I'm sorry, it's actually Zion. <laughs> she doesn't like it. Um, what, what is it? Hmm? Zion. 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 <laughs> Well, here we do. I think for about six wrong. months of talking to you, I got it wrong. Yeah, for six yeah, months. yeah. It happens. Even now I'm still not sure. <laughs> yeah. oh, which one is um, it? So we live in Cornwall, actually. So, yeah, yeah, about five and a half hours from here. Whereabouts um, in Cornwall? Just between Truro and Newquay, um, in the middle of absolutely nothing. Just fields. Oh, fields amazing. and fields, sheep. Yeah. yeah. Um, have they got the internet down there yet? Oh, yeah. We do have internet. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There, actually, there's no How delivery. Rude. There's no <laughs> delivery. Yeah, you literally can't. Is, it kind of explains why we sat in our hotel room and at Deliveroo last night. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. can't do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not something we can do. If you want, if you don't want to cook, you need to go to a restaurant. There's literally nothing. Yeah. You can't get yeah. a takeaway. That's yeah. it. But there is incredible independent restaurants. And yeah. Like, there's a yeah. Lot, I'm there's sure. A lot yeah. There's a good food, food culture there, isn't it? You've got to venture out. You've got mm. to go to it. Yeah. So we only moved there in uh, December 2019. Yeah. So we're just approaching our third year of living Where'd you, in Where did you move from? From just outside Surrey. Outside okay. Guildford, yeah, yeah, just outside Guildford. Um, so we basically moved to Cornwall to a place where we knew literally nobody yeah. and straight into a pandemic. So exactly, that that's what I was going to say. So it's some in 2019. Yeah. I think you had some good walks, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. And it's a very, very inspirational place. And like we've yeah. kind of, we felt like we found our people down there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of our friends are creatives and independents. And like that, just uh, having that like group of friends is amazing for being an independent. Yeah. It's the first time we ever had mates who were around Monday to Friday, nine till five, <laughs> and not three on Saturday. Yeah. Because when we lived in Surrey, it's uh, you know it's commute about for London so a lot of the people that we knew worked all week and off on the weekend so we got invited to a lot of stuff and could go to nothing yep. and ultimately you just end up with kind of nobody in your social circle really yeah. and your family hate you for it and you know what you're supposed to do <laughs> yeah. then yeah. we get down to Cornwall and everyone's exactly the same as us yeah. um, just a huge community of 
freelancers and there's a proper um, gig culture down there. Like nobody really has a full-time job. Everyone's sort of like a sideline surf bum and is sort of <laughs> yeah. trying to avoid working in every way they yeah, can. Yeah. Um, but so whilst yeah, we also right absolutely in. <laughs> crushing it in their business. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. it. It sounds, like you, it sounds like you've already answered my question, but I was going to say like, what, what, what was the purpose of the move? Like what was the inspiration Initially, behind yeah. kind of moving from Surrey? Initially, uh, we so basically we travelled a lot for weddings. So we started, even in our first year, we shot like three or four destination weddings back in 2016. Um, and so like every time we travelled, we'd come home and be like, oh, this is not like the most inspiring place to live. Like everywhere we went was like, oh, this is amazing. We love it. Like everywhere else and coming home never really felt great. So initially we were like, I don't know if like this is our forever place. Um, and then the real tipping point was in 2018, we um, took a trip to New Zealand. My brother lives in Wellington. Um, so the, the twins were one. So we took them on a uh, eight week trip to Hong Kong, then New Zealand, then Los Angeles, which was lots of long as, yeah, as yeah. difficult as it sounds yeah. with one year old. Um, and we managed to book four weddings in a row in New Zealand. So we, we each shot two weddings out there and kind of it felt like you know we kind of like got a taste of how it would be if we lived somewhere else because we, we were working just, and, and living with his brother so we yeah. were sort of like getting like new zealand life and yeah. wellington's really really cool um again like in terms of types of people it's very similar to cornwall yeah. and so we got back from new zealand and we were like that was it that's what we want for our life um and just not in new zealand do you know well it's 30 hour <laughs> flight or, yeah and we do we do love our friends and family and we were just like it's not for us so we totally respected what his brother had done out there and just like incredible kudos to them but we knew we couldn't do it so we started to look for where's like that and I'd spent a lot of time in Cornwall growing up and I just said to Ash do you know what actually Newquay's like that let's go and spend some time in Newquay um so we basically decided to to do that but to do that in a way that felt like real life so we'd book an Airbnb but we'd like leave a wedding and go to the Airbnb. So it, we couldn't give ourselves any like false ideals about yeah. how it was going to be living. Yeah, yeah there was one. Yeah. So we shot a wedding in Tuscany, didn't we? Yeah. And we were like, when we come home, let's just drive straight down to Newquay and we'll just book a, a Airbnb as if we had just done a destination wedding, yeah. flown into Heathrow and then drive home. Um, and we were like, yeah, we can do that. That's not too bad. Yeah. So we did um, We did stuff like we would only like cook, cook in the Airbnb and stuff to kind of get a feeling. We didn't do any holiday things. To yeah. feel how it would be. Yeah. You guys are great. And, um, and so we really were like, testing this out. Yeah. We, Put the bins out. Yeah. The corner like shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we were like, you know, actually, if this is something we want, we have to accept the fact that we may not be able to move our business, and we probably won't be able to be because the population saturation in Cornwall is nothing mm-hmm. like in mm-hmm. Surrey. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we can't move our business, it means that every single wedding we do now will effectively be like a mini destination because it's going to be at least four and a half hours in the car yeah. for every wedding. Yeah. So we were, we kind of did all of that and we were like... Kind of a commitment. That's yeah. a real yeah. commitment. But the payoff, I mean, the pros and cons list was, I actually don't do them anymore because they're so stupid because um, the pros are things you cannot write and the cons are long <laughs> yeah. and easily written it's true. down. Yeah. All the cons are like, you know, logistical things like <laughs> childcare nearby, families nearby. Yeah. And then the, the con... Tra- the, transport links. The pros were like constantly inspired. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, how do you really yeah. measure yeah. that? Yeah. So we basically just ended up with one thing on the pros list, which was like, we will love it. And then this huge cons list. And we were like, do you know what? Let's just try. Mm-hmm. So we, we basically went to sort of like loosely look at what we could afford to buy there. Um, walked into this 1860s high ceiling Cornish stone Victorian, Victorian yeah. house. Yeah. Um, that the owners had a very similar aesthetic to us, like charcoal walls, subway tiles. And we literally walked in and I went to Ash, well, we're buying this house now, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. um, and it took a year to do it. It took a year to buy the house because obviously Cornish houses are damp as. Like, the, yeah. everyone's got damp. It's like, yeah. you go down the pub, you're like, hey, mate, how's your damp doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thing. Yeah. We've all got it. Um, but yeah, lots of survey stuff lots of yeah toing and froing. we got gazumped and lost it at one yeah. point and had to kind of get it back wow um, so yeah how was that stressful. stressful yeah it was really stressful if and anyone's moving now i'm always like oh you poor thing how, <laughs> how, how did, did you nice even get it back stay. how did you even get it back just um pay more paying money. more money yeah, yeah. that's it <laughs> that's <laughs> it <laughs> Like the house prices, Surrey compared to Cornwall at that time yeah. was like insane. Not so we anymore. sold our like uh, two and a half bedroom semi detached house with like no garden and bought this four bedroom massive house. Yeah. And it was 20 grand less. It was so much cheaper. I have yeah. to say, so we, unfortunately, it's totally it's, gone that's not the, the other way anymore. now. Yeah. 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 Kind of feels as well like if you hadn't have made that move, like, I just think you would have spent 
probably the next decade cursing yeah. yourselves yeah going we should have just done it yeah. why why on earth did we not do it yeah i think that's something like we're definitely not afflicted with that like we will jump in head first like the stupid people that we are rather than possibly regret something later yeah um so yeah that's so us and everyone always thinks we haven't thought anything through um but it's just that we're like if we decided to do something it's just gonna happen yeah, yeah. By hook we'll, or take, by we'll take the risk yeah. Yeah. yeah and it sounds like you guys made the move very much for for the lifestyle yeah and in the sense of having that, that freedom of literally being able to have a creative lifestyle that that you guys really really want but even and you worked hard for it but how yeah. did that sort of like begin in terms of like your photography career and how did you guys start that really how oh, well so oh, man. let's do a short version yeah no so, we're here for the long <laughs> one we're here for the long one <laughs> the guys want the long one, one. Um, yeah. so we we actually met um, working in an office and actually it was quite an entrepreneurial environment because the chap who owned the business, my friend Tom, um, he'd grown this business from the ground up and at the point that we were working there together was worth you know, several million in turnover a year. So we had this like quite inspirational boss that we were both working for and originally we were working but we were just mates yeah. and then probably about two years in we started to have feelings for each other <laughs> yeah, it was funny because he like Tom uh, I still meet up for coffee with him now but he always used to tease us he like oh you two are the perfect couple and we're like no no like that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard yeah, we were just like genuinely. best friends yeah. so, like, and we, we were just best friends they were like guys you look like each other <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> like, yeah um, um, so to us it was just ridiculous we never thought that would be a thing so we both we were both working there for a bit and then um, Ash moved on and went to work for Volwork which is the blender company I don't yeah, know yeah, if you yeah. know they make a Thermomix it's yeah, called it's yeah it's a crazy cool. blender um, so he was working in like online marketing and I was an ops director for this logistics firm, so it's the, it's not a Crying creative. Crying at your desk every day because you're gone. But we're, <laughs> right? wearing the boots and like driving a really nice car. But um, yeah. but ultimately, I think that we we had this conversation where because we spent no time together, my job was really both of our jobs are really full on. Yeah. But mine in particular was you know I was in a position in the company where you get the call at five a.m. from something that's gone wrong, and um, Ash was really struggling with that. He was like, "You're on your phone on Sundays. It's crazy." Yeah. Um, and then. But I did love it. I did love the work, but the lifestyle that I had was not healthy. And so we ended up having conversations about like how our future would look if we carried on like this. And we were like, we'll be 80 and we'll have spent our entire lives at our desks and none of it together. Yeah. And we were just like, that's actually not what we want. And I don't mm -hmm. know if that came from like having started off kind of in the same office. So we knew what it was like to spend the day together. And we are kind of like, we, we always joke that we only argue if we've been apart for too long. If we're together, we're all right. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're quite in, in each other's pockets, and that's fine for us. And we were like, we want to do our life together, not separately. How do we do it? And um, you had been shooting weddings for a while. Yeah, it, and it, I wasn't a wedding photographer. No. I just, like, I was the friend who had a camera, <laughs> so everyone was like, oh. Can you bring a camera? I'll pay you, like, 200 <laughs> yeah. quid to shoot Everyone wedding. in the audience is going, yep, yeah. been there, <laughs> done yeah. that, got that badge. <laughs> And at the time, you know, I was on a salary of like, I don't know, for, for like 1,500 quid. So when someone was like, I'll pay you 400 quid to shoot my wedding, I'm like, wow, 400 yeah. pounds? <laughs> yes. Are you kidding me? For a day. Yeah. For a, for, <laughs> and all I've got to do is take photos. Yeah. So I loved it. And, and then. You um, photograph bands a lot as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. That was kind of how I started with the photography was like, I used sense. to play in bands, like play drums. I always took a camera with me and mm. photographed bands, but bands had no money. So that wasn't really, I never saw photography as a career and it was always just like a little side thing. Yeah. Um, and then, so we got married in 2015 and it was on, after we got married, we were having these conversations about like, how, how do we, well, initially we were like, how do we never work for somebody else again? Yeah. We wanted to work for ourselves and just decide, like design our own life and like unsubscribe from the nine to five, Monday to Friday. And be like, that's, that can't be the only option. We have, there's gotta be another and Like way. for us, that's because it, we had tried it and didn't make us happy. I've got friends who do those kinds of jobs and they are happy. Yeah. But for me, it, I'd got the, I'd got the car. I remember the day that I picked up my BMW one series oh, and it was it beautiful. Was nice. It was White like, with blacked out windows, black yeah. alloys. Yeah. And I got the plate like personal plate and everything and I remember Cat's car they, <laughs> yeah. Cat's car yeah um, they had it under this like red sheet and they pulled this they put me in like a VIP area pulled this red sheet off it and I remember I just hated every second I hated it I felt like a fraud I didn't know what I was doing there mm. and I realised that I was never going to be made happy by those things and like mm. two days into driving that car I was like well this is just a massive direct debit every month isn't it yeah. and I just didn't it did nothing for me and I had mates who were like, I get in my car every morning and I just feel amazing, you know, and I love my shoes. And I was just like, for whatever reason, 
that doesn't do it for me. And you were having similar yeah. realizations for yourself. So we were like, yeah, let's let's find a way to get out of that. I think there must be so many people that are just they just get drawn into that lifestyle. And it's yeah. are they gen do they genuinely feel like that? And it's or very are hard. Saying that, are they saying that to just justify yeah. it to themselves? It's um, very hard to unsubscribe once you're in it. Yeah. Because once you've like, you know, put stuff on credit cards and put your car on finance and like you you're committed to this certain financial commitment every mm-hmm. month and it's very hard to get out of that. So actually it took us a while. Like we were renting like because everyone did. Like there was we just got married and we were renting this like massive house for the two of us because everybody else did that in Surrey. And we were like, okay, cool. We're going to leave there. We moved into like a one bedroom house share that our friend owned. Better contrast. We're like, now we're going to pay off all our debts. We're going to get rid of all this stuff that we don't need. And we're going to like scale down and start building a business. I, I gave the car back to the garage. <laughs> Amazing. I looked up when I'd, you know, when you've, you've paid enough that you can just hand the keys back. I just handed them back and let them take it. Did they put it back under that blanket and put you in the vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> no? Did they yeah. do that? Slow motion. Yeah. 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 Oh. Get out, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> you ready for Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically we had like this, we spreadsheeted our entire life for like what we're spending money on and then figured out what we could get rid of. And every month it was like, cool, that's gone, that's gone. So we basically did this whole year in one room. A massive in a financial share. detox, isn't it? It is. Yeah, massively. Yeah. And do you know what? Like the more and more you paid off, like the more freer we felt. Yeah. And it was amazing because you got to, the, so that was 2015. So man, 2015 was like a ridiculous year for us. So we both were working full time still. We were paying off those debts. We were saving to buy a house because we knew that we had to buy a house whilst we were on salaries. So we could because, get the mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. the first year of being a freelancer is not going to be the That's time to buy a house. Time, no. um, and Kat also fell pregnant with our twin daughters that year yeah. as well. Yeah. So let's so, just do everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> I think year. we shot 24 weddings that year. Alongside and full-time And worked jobs. full-time. And um, mate, it was, it wow. was carnage. And not yeah. just small full-time jobs. Like full-time jobs you can't check out. Yeah, the that's it. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So it was, it was a lot. And like, as like, um, women aren't wimps and being pregnant really sucks <laughs> like in the yeah. beginning um, I remember no matter how much I wanted to be defiant against what was happening to my body I was falling asleep everywhere like I'd sit down <laughs> I'd just go and um, Ash was like cool I guess I'm doing all the editing now yeah. um, but that's fine like our our um, approach has always been teamwork like teamwork who's makes the dream the, work right? who's got the energy skills whatever it is for yeah. this yeah. thing that's happening if you're the best now, person for that job at that time that's it. yeah and there's no ego in that it's just like whoever can do it you know um but the like the realities of it were that we were living on like naffle money because we were saving everything we couldn't do anything because that meant spending money <laughs> and we were shooting weddings and i know it's tmi but i'd have pushed my body so far shooting that wedding during the day that i'd be throwing up in the car park at the end of it so because yeah. obviously twins everything's like your body's yeah. just being flooded with hormones so everything and they're female twins so it was just the morning sickness was just like off the scale um and it was just i remember it like we we did a couple of destination that year yeah one was in italy and then one in the october so i had the twins in the january in the october we were in um spain malaga. yeah malaga, malaga. Uh, so obviously with twins at that point you're quite big at that point and you know everything's quite difficult um and i just remember I was so ill like i was so ill that i had to go and lay down at their wedding yeah I, um, I was i shot like the first dance in the dance floor i was like luckily the couple was like somebody i knew from working at thermix so uh, they mean it's so he did my job in uh, in spain so they put us up in the ve- wedding venue we had a room upstairs so i was like you just go upstairs just lay down i'll just carry on shooting um yeah it's kind of savage when you look back on it and like the things you put yourself through but you know that you're building for the future and you're like I've, I'm this is all so that I can quit my job next year like yeah. and yeah when that finally came it was like unreal yeah. wasn't it but I think we like I, I like to mention how it actually was because I think people are like oh you just did this thing and it's yeah. like they yeah. forget that you like you were in it yeah. you, yeah. Were, you were in the yeah. trenches yeah. this is why we love the long versions because you, yeah. <laughs> you're really yeah. you, no you're really able to see the nitty gritty of things what was the condensed version now <laughs> how quickly were you going to yeah. yeah. condense it I don't know what we met what house yeah. had babies yeah, yeah. 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 you touch upon something there in terms of like when you guys are sort of like scaling back financially and sort of like doing your financial detox um did you sort of like use any sort of programs or any sort of like resources that you guys had heard of or was that sort of like innate within you guys to kind of like let's just do this get yeah, get the spreadsheet was, out and yeah, yeah. map everything else literally just yeah just a spreadsheet yeah. and i um 
my mum's always been really good at budgeting and I think I'd probably get that from her and so it was literally just like a spreadsheet and I just put everything on there like all of our commitments and then like you know any credit cards any like we had like um like store accounts to buy oh, like, like work clothes and card. stuff like mm. to buy new suits that like, you don't need unbelievable and like, oh. I would never have that yeah. now like because I mean, you needed you don't, suits you don't look like the kind of people that have a next, next account card. exactly yeah. because you needed like workwear yeah. so like occasionally you go into next and just drop 300 quid on like suiting and obviously like, not yeah. everyone does that and like you know maybe we shouldn't have done it anyway right, but, but. Um, yeah we just put everything on there <laughs> and just <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> this isn't an accident <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Like it was a lot to work through. And you know, like, if you do have a good income, you will just spend up to it. Like, mm, yeah. you know, even... Well, not just, even just up to it. Uh, people spend beyond it, don't they? Yeah, yeah and exactly. even recently with all this cost of living stuff, you know, you yeah. look at like, what what are my direct yeah, debits? Think, and you're like, I I think my job six. this week is to do a budget. Like, yeah. that, again, yeah. it's exactly this thing. I think for the last few years, I think we've all been able to kind of get away with it a bit. Yeah. And yeah. now that... You know, my electricity bill came through the day. It was three hundred and sixty quid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, gas and electric for the house. I'm like, whoa, this yeah. is okay. That's the same as that. This is now, this is real yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you can't like not have the heating on. Yeah, exactly. and you're like, right, yeah. Disney Plus has to go, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we did look recently. Had like six subscription services. Oh, no like, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. need yeah. all of these options. And for I TV, think also like. like you know, if you're not constantly looking at your bank account, you kind of just forget. Yeah. Like, so you you commit to these stuff. Even, or you might be like, oh, I'm going to do a month's trial of that. And then you mm. forget to cancel mm-hmm. it. And three months later, you're like, Amazon damn. Prime. <laughs> yeah. So, so life, life at this point sounds like it's pretty chaotic and just relentless. Like yeah. that, that period In of that year. like yeah. being pregnant, having yeah. a full-time job, shooting weddings, trying to strip back on your finances yeah yeah how does life look now like paint what's the what's the opposite now it's where are we at in cornwall <laughs> <laughs> i would say we went we've gone from we went from that to then it kind of being the dream yeah, yeah. uh for when we were wedding photographers up until the end of 2019 and then COVID. the pandemic hit we started able burners and now we have two full-time jobs which so is we, way we more actually, than we ever wanted we had this conversation uh in the car the other day and we were saying like we're back in a season that feels very much like when we started. Mm-hmm. And actually we don't like where we're at at the moment. And the conversation we were having is like, it's actually, it's okay to not like where you're at as long as you've got an idea where you're going. Yeah. Um, and me and Ash are quite happy to do hard times as long as there's an end point. Like yeah. I wouldn't want to live my life constantly feeling like I'm not enjoying it. That's not me. I'm actually allergic to it. And sometimes it annoys you. Well, you, you could just much. go back to Surrey, couldn't you? Yeah, I mean, Ash is like, job. you check out so easily. I do, if, I, if, some, if I'm not enjoying my life, I quite easily, like, I've had enough now. But, but that's the thing I get from you guys. You're very much, like, lifestyle driven, yes. which I love, 100%. absolutely love. And, and literally, you guys were talking, and I'm like, that's it, that's it. I just go in my notes and just type, <laughs> type in the title for the podcast. I'm already thinking because you literally said it, design your own lifestyle, because yeah. that's yeah. it. And, and that exactly. comes across so naturally from you guys. So kudos, that's really inspirational. And I think if you don't do that, what's the point in being an entrepreneur? Like if you're going to start a business or be an entrepreneur and then just do the same thing that you were doing anyway, there's kind of no point. Unless you're like, you know, I'm going to do that for five years and then this is what I'm going to do. Mm. And I think Able Burners, we started it, to be honest, we didn't even start it to get through us the pandemic. We started it for we something to do. We're like we were just like, we're kind of bored at home now. Like, let's just do this. We had this little idea. Um, and you have and it, creative energy, don't you? Like as a yeah. creative person you have to get rid of it. Mm. So yeah, you were well, like- Welcome yeah. to the studio. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's the same, it's, it's hard to describe, isn't it? It's just like this bottled up thing. You've just got to kind of, if you don't go out and do that, it, get yeah, angry. you just get angry and miserable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's probably yeah. why you're a drummer. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, actually, so it, it feels like we've gone straight to Able Burners and so just for people listening and watching, what, what is Able Burners? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Got a little Christmas present Happy for you. Oh, hello. <laughs> right, thank you. Okay. That's for you guys. Oh. So before I mean, we start I'm talking not, about I'm it, not gonna, shall I'm we unveil it? I did, yeah, I did say to Igor yesterday. Yeah, there's like, a the couple of bits in there. I can't remember what I put in. Oh, hello. I have to trust Ash that he did this right Ooh. because yeah. uh, careful, glass yes. things. Don't break it, Igor. All right, all right. All right. Slow down. down. Lovely bit of brand in there. Just going to pop this here. Christmas, love from Cat and Ash. Thank you, guys. If you, you, like, you guys t- can come up again. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. It would just be more able burners, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just push that into the clip, Igor. Don't be shy. Yeah, this is why people need to watch on YouTube, don't they? Really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, you want to put what that little flask up a bit? Pass it to me, soap. and I'll set it up correctly for okay. you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> you know when you've got a bunk bear of right? So yeah, 
here. Yeah, a little bit higher. There we Ooh. go. Okay, okay, because of the candle, of course. Candle, yep. yeah. yeah. You don't want to get soot on the bottom of that glass. No. Gloss. There we go. <laughs> a, bit yeah. product, a bit of product placement yeah, here. I like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I bet all the audience is going to go in <laughs> and start buying one. That's what oh, we want. If you do, I set it up last night, another idea, 20% off. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 now there's, the, there's the marketer within. Happy and literally, yeah. literally, <laughs> literally, I have here one of my questions. Literally, just by doing research and stuff, I'm like, you seem to have like your marketing chops <laughs> really, oh, really yeah. lined up. But yeah, we'll go into it afterwards. Mm. But yeah. yeah. That just shows. Um, right, so what we've got is like a, a, a glass kind of vessel. Yeah. It's, I'm sure there's a natural term for that, a correct term. It's a... It looks like a science... It's actually yeah. a science experience. Flask, yes. Boiling flask, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you yeah. might recognise yeah. that from school. We've yeah. got a bit, yeah. of, copper, kit. bit of copper piping, a clip, and then we've got a plinth on the bottom yeah. where you obviously put your candle. Yeah. It's so okay. simple, but so and why effective. Would you use, why would you use something like this over an incense stick or a candle? Uh, incense stick or candle... Um, I think I've struggled to argue apart from the aesthetics because I think it's really beautiful oh yeah. it's stunning yeah um, versus electric diffusers which is actually more say. where our so it is a diffuser mm. um, electric diffusers roar when you use them and take electricity and Ash and I are quite into the slow living aesthetic which is why the card says slow down yeah. so the idea is um, it doesn't run off electricity it's completely analogue like a vinyl or whatever um, but yeah, also, also like mainly the there's like a ritual to... Yeah, there's kind of like a ritual, like making coffee in the morning with a proper coffee machine, like it's a slow living thing. Mm -hmm. Also, the candle like reflects through the water and like makes really nice um, shapes and colours. So it's quite mesmerising when you're like sat there with the lights low, just watching it. And then like you get some vapour coming out. Stuff. You can tell your photographers like, and you love your aesthetics. Did, where, did this, where did this idea come from? Like, um, what, what, like, how do you seen... kind of just land on the idea? <laughs> we I know what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to create a diffuser. We were in another photographer friend's house and he had something similar. It was made very differently. And Ash really loved it. And um, we went home and tried to find it. We couldn't find it anywhere. It was an Ed, was it? It was an Ed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, yeah, the man, like, in terms of how it was actually constructed, it was completely different, but the concept was the same. It turned out he'd actually bought it in like Australia or something like that. And um, Ash was like, I really, really want it. Couldn't get it anywhere. And I was like, to be honest, it's a, it's a science set. I'll buy you one. So I went on Amazon and I was like, boiling flask, clamp. So I bought it. We still have the one that I bought at home, but obviously it's completely metal. The flask like kind of wants to fall off it. Just like, you remember how <laughs> chemistry was at school, yeah. right? Um, and he was like, yeah, it, basically I just put a candle under it. And I actually made the burner blend that Ed had, but I made it from essential oils myself. So instead of buying it, I just made it up. Um, from the separate oils um, thanks Google and um, Ash was like it works exactly the same it's just really ugly and it's you know it's not I don't like the way it looks um, he was like I'd like to try and make my own one that looks a bit nicer so I was like I would love you to do that and then about nine months later you actually did it yeah. um, we were busy we had twins twin babies yeah. So we, um, the first one was made out of, um, what was the bottom, OSB? Uh, yeah, OSB board, which is like, doesn't look very pretty. No, it's quite ugly actually. Um, we, we didn't use to seal, we didn't seal the copper, so over time it oxidised. It had a silver clip, which was horrible to look at. Again, we still have that burner and it's gross. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but please keep it. Yeah, yeah. Never gonna. Yeah. In fact, if I put it in, in, in like a glass box, yeah. the yeah, first yeah. one. Yeah. 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 one. Um, so... What was weird is we were at this time in our lives where lots of people were coming to our house because we used to do all of our photographer education stuff at home and we did all of our, because um, we had a workshop at the time, and we did all of our client meetings at home. Yep. So people were coming to the house quite a lot and we'd have this thing going in the background and they'd be like, what is that? And then well, the first thing would always be like, it smells amazing in here. Yeah. What is that? And then they'd be like, I want one. Oh, yeah. And then, so, yeah, they were like, oh, you should, you should make a business out of that. And I was like, <laughs> I've got one-year-old twins and I've just started a business. I'm definitely not doing no, that. I'm very tired. Please be quiet. <laughs> um, so it, we, I think it was only a year before the pandemic. You bought the domain because you yeah, came I, up with a I name. Found, um, I, was, I found it in a book, actually. So Abel is Hebrew for vapor or breath. Um, and I was like, oh, that'd be an amazing name for that if I ever made a business. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So Able Burners, I'll just buy it. It's amazing how you have these little moments. Of, yeah. You know, where yeah. did they come Actually, from? I heard yeah. it on one of your other podcasts. I think it was Pearl Cosmetics. She was like, oh, I already yeah. have a domain. Like, she'd already bought it. Yeah. And yeah. I was, it was exactly the same for us. Like, I just bought it and was like, I'll just leave it there. And actually, it came up for renewal and I, I still hadn't, this still hadn't happened. And I was like, oh, should I just get rid of it? And I was like, oh, I'll just keep it. So I just bought it and then, um, yeah, just renewed it, sorry. 
And then, yeah, the global pandemic hit and I was like, so we had about two months of just moping around, doing nothing, decorated the house, like, That's you great. know, did what everyone else did, sorted yeah, yeah. out the cupboards, sorted out the garden, did <laughs> yeah. everything. And then it got Started to the- Started foraging, yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and it, uh, was it like May? Got to the May and we're like, okay, well, I'm kind of bored now. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe that's, maybe that's an idea. So I was, I kind of, I get quite obsessed. I'm quite an obsessive person. So if there's something I want to do, like if Kat says to me like, oh, we should like paint this wall. It's like, done. Midnight that night, I'm painting that wall. Like it's, I'll just go and do it yeah. if I think it's a good idea. You have to learn um, to be yeah. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's a really good thing though, because even, even I was sort of like thinking, if Zaya said something to, like that to me, I was kind of like, yeah, it's not going to happen and then three within, years later, yeah, still within the next it. two months, whatever. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So I think that obsessiveness, it is a great skill. It is. A, yeah. But yeah, you, you get your, you, your positive, like a, your pros and cons. Nothing, it's an all or nothing approach, it. isn't it? Exactly. That's it. It's like but, if you're going to go for it, you're, you're buying all the best gear, yeah, all the yeah. best gear for whatever it is. Yeah. You're going full on and yeah. giving it, giving it the best shot. Exactly yeah. that. So, so, <laughs> Sam. So, Igor, <laughs> Studio Ninja. Yeah, let's just talk. Let's talk a little bit about our sponsor. And I was wondering about what we need to say in this little section because I really want to talk about just how vital it is to my business. And yeah. one thing that came up recently was in my own business was that I was thinking about whether I need to get a VA on board. Mm -hmm. Like, do I need somebody that's going to help me just you know perform some of the admin tasks? And when I looked at it, and I re it really boiled down to what do I need somebody on board for? I realised that I don't actually do much admin. Yeah, and I don't do much admin purely because of Studio Ninja. Yeah, everything's automated. Yeah, my invoices, my diary, my questionnaires that I send out. Email templates. Cha email templates, chasing up invoices. Yeah, everything's fully automated to the point where it doesn't take a huge amount of my time anyway. So it kind of defeats the whole point of a VA. So for me, it is a very integral part of my business. Yeah. And I think when you're running a business, you're self-employed like we are, mm -hmm. you know, being efficient, yeah. being productive, making sure that things run in the right order. If you find yourself doing any kind of repeat task, you have to say to yourself, why am I repeating this? Automate it. Um, and if you can automate it, then that's it. And that's really where Studio Ninja fits in with me and my business. And they have very kindly given us a discount code, haven't they, for this podcast? So yeah. what's that discount code, Igor? Another idea. And another idea gets you 50% off your first annual subscription. Yeah. So it's just a no brainer. I mean, I wouldn't even be hanging around. Just go and look at Studio Ninja. Just go and do it right now. But thank you very much, guys, for sponsoring this podcast. We love you. We appreciate you. Keep it up. We love Studio Ninja. So obviously, I got it in my head that we were going to start this. So then I spent like our last seven hundred pounds of savings, and Cat was livid. Can we just talk <laughs> we can... about the environment, the financial environment under which we spent yes. our last seven hundred pounds of savings? Because that was the pandemic, right? So we both work full time for the Springles have no other income and yeah. Ash just spent our last bit of saving. The conversations <laughs> we were having at the beginning of the pandemic. Did were you get like, the spreadsheet out? <laughs> Luckily the spreadsheet was a long one. We were like spreadsheet right out by that point. Yeah. But um, you know like we, we were having conversations when that all started like how long can we actually survive without losing the house because we just lost our incomes and because um, the Springles is a limited company and we're both employees dividends we fell, yep. yeah we fell dividends. through the gaps on all the government yep. help so actually our COVID story is pretty bleak if it weren't for Abel Burners yeah so the um, furlough money's like you know 1400 the mortgage is 1500 yeah and that's and then all your other bills um, so actually before Abel like I was looking at fruit picking jobs and stuff and like Amazon driving which I know yeah. other like other photographers went and did that and we were happy to do it we looked at fruit picking because we heard that other people wouldn't do it and we were like well if that's what's needed that is what we will do like we're quite bloody think, minded about things yeah. you know um but yeah so he spent that money i actually didn't have a go at you i just went why didn't i i yeah. was like and you were like <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> so i kind of like oh, it's bold yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's really bold um, without so, even asking <laughs> With that, I just bought like, I bought really nice packaging. I bought, um, I made the logo, made the website. Like we've got that skill set in ourselves. Like Kat's really good at copywriting. I was in online marketing so I can build websites and we e-commerce and stuff. So we kind of like just built everything, <laughs> bought some really nice like branded tissue paper and like we wanted it to look like absolutely incredible. And, uh, and um, Kat was like, well, you shouldn't, there's no point building loads. Like no one's going to buy them. Like literally, no one will buy oh, them. So you, can't I, be, I had, you can't be a bit of mate, just like confidence from your partner, can you? Had, you know, a bit of support. I didn't and... say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, literally. Yeah. yeah I didn't say it well, like that. Keep, yeah, keep, yeah, it up, yeah, keep it up. Yeah. Keep it up. Keep it up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Um, I can see that you guys appreciate a bit of plywood. 
love yeah. plywood yeah. I said don't go cutting up a good bit of ply that we could use for the house <laughs> until we know that they've yeah. sold because I was just like that's we like most of our furniture supply. Ash is quite a good carpenter, and I was just like, I can we can make a table out of that if you don't turn it into a load of tiny little plinths. Yeah. yeah. So, so I the, just said, wait until you. So sold the first them. one was um, just a piece of plywood with the copper, and uh, yeah, so we we kind of like encouraged me not to spend loads of my time building loads. So I had <laughs> one. I'd built one to photograph. And then we um, stuck it on Facebook and we sold like 20 a day for the first three months. And we're totally wow. well, because obviously we like, the problem was we hadn't made any. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here so 20 we go. A day. 20 a day for the first three months. Oh, what's well, the maths on that? We did, uh, <laughs> That's it. The, the easy answer is we hit 100k revenue in the first six months. Oh, there you go. Oh, and we were like, <laughs> what the hell? Like we never even hit 100k on the sprinkles in three years. <laughs> like we yeah. did it in six months selling these little burners from the back that you've not even like, made yet yeah literally hadn't made them so yeah. then we were like we better mate up till 3am <laughs> yeah. like get yeah. cutting that plywood up mate mate honestly it was ridiculous I, I, the said, dining table. I, like, I didn't yeah. even have because we'd only just moved there I didn't even have a shed <laughs> so I had I put this like gazebo outside and I was cutting all the wood under there and like it got to the point where I was having to like so I'd cut all the plywood and then we were like um sealing it with oil and like I had to put we've got a log burner so I had to put the log burner on and like lay them all out on the floor in the lounge to dry them quick enough because they just weren't drying like yeah. it was just we couldn't make them quick enough quick at enough. the rate they were serving. Yeah, and everything comes with a little, um, so in the box is a little 10 mil. So we didn't sell oils or hand soap or anything like that at the time, but yeah. every single yeah. burner went out with a little 10 mil oil. And just the amount of those that needed labeling and filling was insane. Yeah. So our yeah. evenings were drying bases in front of the fire, yeah. him being out under this gazebo with a, um, he'd run like our hot tub heater, you know, the one you put above the hot tub. Like a patio heater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patio yeah. heater. And, um, and I'd be there like with a, well, a turkey baster is what it was <laughs> filling 10 mil bottles yes you just like um, by hand like yeah and sometimes I'd sit there with a tray in front of the TV and I'd just be like you know like that little robot I think, I think this is so good to hear though because people really? will look at your business and they'll just go god they've done yeah they're doing, they're, they've done really well I bet they've got it nailed yeah but actually you just you know especially in those early years you just built, you're kind of you're reacting you're making it up yeah. as you go a little bit oh massively and it's really hard I suppose during those times to be able to step back and go hold on we need to this needs to change a little bit yeah because yeah. when you're making those that many orders you like your primary goal is just to meet those orders For right sure. yeah exactly so, so what like how do you then step away from that to then go what needs to change how do we have that product development that business development because we, to be honest, like, at the same time because you you also had your your wedding photography stuff going on and things are going up and down with the world what was so, happening with yeah, them yeah. Yeah. rescheduled weddings yeah. and yeah, yeah. and also yeah, the sorry guys I've not been able to edit your wedding this year because <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been cutting up plywood well yeah. luckily not luckily it was during the pandemic so no weddings were actually happening but obviously we all had that admin of like oh they've now moved the date again mm. and everything has to move again and our diary was just constantly moving yeah. and we had the two kids at home so um, oh forget I forgot your kids yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we couldn't I completely forgot for a moment on top of all of that for most of the day because yeah. they're obviously what one, yeah, three one of yeah. us would work and one of us so what station work. have you got the kids that are working on what were they doing they, actually they used to carry the boxes they loved <laughs> yeah. it like they yeah they, you'd like pack the box and then po uh, pass it to them and they'd carry it to the front door and make a yeah. pile <laughs> um, yeah and like sometimes uh they'd be sat like coloring and i'd just be packing boxes next to them and stuff but we did when like, we so that, start cutting up that copper pipe for yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> good time. there's a hacksaw yeah <laughs> um it, we did hit a point where we were like we didn't have any systems, we didn't have any infrastructure and we were growing too fast. And so we did what most people would never do. We went out of stock. We were literally like, no, stop, stop, stop. And it was very brave and I'm very glad we did it, yeah. um, but it could have gone super wrong because we had this momentum and we were like, actually it all has to stop for a bit and we need to catch up. Um, so we just kind of were very open with anybody that was listening that was actually following us. What was the kind of turnaround time? How long were people waiting for? Oh mate, we were time? really particular about that. Like initially when we were selling, we wanted people to be getting delivered like two, three days. Yeah. Like we wanted to be really quick and make sure like basically give really good customer service. So that was the plan was like, do this as quickly as physically possible. But we did hit this point where, you know, there was like one order, one load of orders where they'd waited probably three weeks. And we were just like, we need to stop now. Like we didn't even have, we had no system. So we just literally, like the, the, the we labels. Had, we also the, had no plan. Like we never intended to start a business. It was something that was just yeah. gonna be like, just keep us going, be entertaining. Like yeah. we enjoyed doing it. And so we, there was no like business plan. There was no 
foresight. There was like, you just got, get caught up in like making and making and making and making. Um, and then we had like every single possible delay you can imagine because of COVID. So like the glass flask at the time didn't have our logo on. So we were ordering them in um, and I'd placed this big order for like, I don't know, 300 glass. And it just didn't turn up. Like it was supposed to be like two days delivery. This is what caused the delays, isn't yeah, it? I've forgotten that. It didn't turn up. And then like the next week it wasn't there. And then, so I called them and they're like, oh yeah, the, the factory shut down in COVID. I was like, what? Like it's why done, you, it's Why are you still there, selling them you online? Like they're still yeah. available on your website. And he was like, oh yeah, no, the, like, cause of COVID, the factory's in, um, I forget where it was, it was in India or somewhere. It was like, it's completely shut. Yeah, I was like, when was will you get them? He's like, I don't know. I was like- When it reopens. Hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> so then you have to like figure out how to buy this science flask hmm. From somewhere uh, without like it's because most of them have like 250 mil and stuff and we didn't yeah. want that we wanted it to be blind in a good, in a good volume <laughs> yeah and they need to arrive not broken yeah. exactly they and still that was arrive broken <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's the first thing I thought of when I saw it I was like it's gonna break and the, but you know um, w- but we've had I mean the glass has just been I mean if you want to know why no one scaled this before I'll give you a list as long as my arm like it's, yeah. it's insane it's so challenging and it continues to be um, like we even were involved in that whole Suez Canal yeah. thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. The, ever, the evergreen. Yeah. Like yeah. we literally, like our stock was involved in that. Like so literally, we're, we're all laughing at that on, yeah. on Instagram and you're like <laughs> crying into your coffee. Um, and it actually was only a couple of days ago that I was reading an article that mentioned that issue. And I was like, oh, I forgot that happened to me. You know, literally yeah. like you, you have to move on from the stuff that mm, happens so mm. quickly. You forget, mm. like we had, um, so the original glass supply was, uh, was in India. And then after that, we moved it to a branded supply from China. And then China shut down their factory. So all of the product was made in the factory, but they'd sent their staff home and they weren't allowed back in. And you know how rigorous their lockdowns were. So that was another batch that we couldn't get out of the country. And Meanwhile, yeah. you're still selling 20 a day. Well, you just, oh, yeah. You just, yeah, I mean, we, yeah. Did, we did a lot of stuff too. We're very nimble. And we did a lot of stuff to kind of continue to be able to sell. So there's other supply. It's just not what we want. So yeah. there was these these ones that had 250 mil in like massive letters written on them. And they're not that attractive. They're not what we want. But we marketed it as a science version of the Able Burner. Um, and we kind of like started talking about that as a slightly different version mm-hmm. of the product. Yeah. So that we were able to carry on selling. We managed to secure some blanks. Yeah. Um, just completely blank ones. But they were hideously expensive. Um, but we were just like, we've got to navigate out. You're in a storm, just get to the port. This isn't the end. You just have to get out of this bit. Um, so even though our margins were getting hit left, right and centre because we couldn't fix, like it was so hard to fix these problems, we were just like, if we can weather it, we will make money on the other side of it. But yeah, yeah it's just challenging yeah. while it was going on. So you should probably get onto the fact that you did build us something to work in. Oh yeah, so in that <laughs> first year, uh, we got to... We started in May, so probably within like six months, like I said, we'd hit like 100k. So we, I was like, right, we can't be doing this under a gazebo. That gazebo actually blew away in a storm. Storm, Cornwall. Uh, Cornwall. <laughs> so we went out fun. one morning and we're like, <coughs> yeah. oh, oh, it's completely gone. It's not even yeah. in the village anymore. I don't know where it went. Um, so I built like, um, uh, my, so before we moved to Cornwall, my brother's a builder. So I went and did some like labouring with him. Turns out building's quite easy. It's like. 60% knowledge, 40% the right tool. So I just bought loads of tools. I built myself a little garden room, which was our workshop. Um, so then we moved everything into there. Um, and then, so actually like where we I moved- love your approach to stuff. I'm just gonna just figure it out myself, just do it myself. Yeah. Oh mate, honestly, like it's YouTube, brilliant. incredible. Yeah. You can find out anything on there. But he'll be like, oh, you know, the thing is I don't really have the skills and I'm like, really? Isn't it just a box? Can't you just, can't you just, yeah. <laughs> sort of it's I'm just like, a yes, square. But it's gotta be it, weatherproof and not slide away or sink or- But because he is obsessive in that way, uh, if you sow a seed with ash, two weeks later, some drawings will start appearing and then four <laughs> yeah. weeks later, you've yeah. got a workshop. So you just got to sort of like enable him and be like, just I think feed you just it. Yeah. feed it. You do get abandoned in the process though. I do. Like once I'm building. You don't mind that if there's a, an end product, do you? If, no, if there's going to be a nice just, shed to work in. He does sort of, um, yeah. he just vanishes out of every aspect of our life while it's happening. <laughs> so like, I know. But it gets done quickly, doesn't like, it? I know that he'll come back eventually, but I'm like, there's two kids, there's a house, there's two businesses. Where is Ash right now? Like yeah. everything just gets left to me, but we get the results. So yeah, it's exactly. great. exactly. But yeah, so you built us this workshop in the garden and we needed to move into it so fast, it never actually got, it didn't get clad until like maybe a year ago, did it? Yeah. So the whole time we were, like it looks lovely, it's really Scandi now, it looks really cool. 
but the whole time we were in it it was kind of just like a (laughs) no it was fine inside but it was like on the outside you could still see all of like the insulation and all of that stuff so ugly um and actually we were back out of that space we had to move out of it before he even finished clad like finished the so work. we can't, yeah, we did like six months, then we moved into that, and then before six months of the the next six months was up, we grew out of that. So we, we were just up, like, it was taking up our loft, our hallways, our spare bedrooms, like yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're putting all of us, all of us off, like just building a side hustle business here, making something. <laughs> I think right. the key is like have an actual plan. Yeah, be like this is what I want to <laughs> do. Don't just be like, ah, oh, I might just do that and chuck it online. And then, yeah. But I mean, do you know what the upside is? Is that it paid our mortgage the whole way through. Mm. Um, COVID and actually and look, at, and look at it now as well it's, it's amazing what you've built it's incredible you've, you've obviously branched out into you know creating what we've got here yeah. that's, so that's, that's, the can, that's our candle, candle we've yeah. got oils now that are branded up really well so we've got hand soap so, yeah, so hand we've gone on. more into the like self care side of stuff so we've, yeah. we've got like bath salts bath oils hand soaps hand balms um, we've got a couple of new products in the pipeline, the pipeline haven't we yeah and the yeah. scent range has, has expanded yeah. so we started off with like one which was Fistral and, um, and now there's Oh, 12. 12 different, yeah. Yeah, different. And they're sense. all named after places we've been, so it's all like inspired by our life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it makes sense about the Santa Monica one. And yeah. The, yeah, that's amazing. So we just did uh, one for Halloween that was in a black bottle, and we named it Rainer Svara after Black Sand Beach in Iceland. And it's so great because we have photos from that beach because we've been there as a family and we're yeah. photographers and we take pictures of it. So um, we're really lucky in the fact that we can just use our life to populate our Instagram grid. Yeah. So. You know, like you're just sort of picking around. What shall I call this new scent? And then you're like, well, I have a load of imagery from Iceland. So how about we start there? Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Um, so today, how many sort of like burners do you guys sell per month or even per week? I don't know. We we processed in Oct- in November. We processed eight hundred and seventy orders. Yeah, something like that. It was that like mental. November's our biggest I mean, month. That is that mental. Is mental. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, bonkers. Yeah. It's- it's crazy and it's very like when you say it like that it sounds amazing right but you're constantly having to buy re- more stock you're constantly having to invest in better equipment and like filling machines and stuff that nobody sees yeah so like um you know i was telling it's my a- mum i was telling my mum the figures actually that we did in uh, november and she's like oh i hope you're putting in a building society and i was like well, you don't have you've never run a no. business have you <laughs> yeah. like it's not all my money it doesn't work like that meanwhile um, you've, gone, you've gone back to bmw and got your new one series yeah, <laughs> yeah. And your big reveal <laughs> we did um we did just have to get a new car and we did get a one series oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy it like that no, okay. it was, uh, it, it was a know, second hand they are now yeah. a second hand reasonable car that does a lot of mileage yeah. <laughs> and works the current well done. Yeah, exactly. um, but no abel's in its own like we've got a proper industrial unit for it now um, there's proper workspace there's you know it's it's proper yeah um, but it's still like so last year uh, in April we took on that unit so it's uh, the winter had been really like massive numbers through winter last year and um, so we're like right we've got to move out of that workshop into a unit so we moved into the unit and then the sales, sales went down dropped. that month and then yeah. the next month they went down and then the next month they went down Start and thinking. just kept going down and down and I was like this is like literally going to be the end of us. Like but we coincided can't... with the shops reopening after COVID. Mm. So yeah. whatever year that was, I've totally lost like, yeah. concept yeah. of 2021, what... But, so we took the unit on and the shops reopened. So everyone was like, I don't want to shop online anymore. Yeah. I want yeah. to go and shop. But it was like restaurants opened up, pubs opened yeah. up, shops opened up. So e-commerce was just like, like literally going down a hill. Um, and it got to the, so like, you know, it got to the point where like sleepless nights, stressing all the time, but we were like, you just got to keep going and just keep going through it. And I'm sure something good will come. And then I think it was, that was the August was like our worst month. The September we had, someone got in touch with us about a corporate order, which was like, so they did Able Burners for their corporate it's gifting. And it was like, units. It was like a 14,000 pound order. And I was like, mate, that's just paid our rent, like massively saved our bacon. Um, and then we went into the winter of like Black Friday. We took on a new ads guy, didn't we? Um, who yeah. runs our Facebook ads now. So actually through the summer, we'd had somebody else running our Facebook ads. So I'd always done them. I felt like I'd kind of hit my ceiling of knowledge. So I outsourced it to an agency and sort of went downhill from there, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> once, once that agency uh, took over. So we quickly got rid of them, found a new guy, and then the winter went back up again. But basically, like, 
it's not been an easy journey. It's been an emotional roller coaster. Mm. Yeah. And like the, when it's going really well, it's amazing. And when it's going really bad, it's like the worst thing ever. Yeah, all consuming. Um, exactly. But this year's been way more stable, hasn't it? It's been yes. a lot actually, more predictable. In the summer, we got ready to mothball because we were like, that's what we should have done in the year where we had, previous year where we had problems. We were like, if we had known that was going to happen, we wouldn't have bought in stock because mm. Able holds about 20K of inventory. I was mentioning to you earlier, which it has to, to be able to sell across all product lines. But it means that's where your money is. So actually, this going into this summer, we were like, we need to be holding way less stock. Um, so we kind of made an effort to sell through everything and then didn't buy anymore. And then actually made ourselves a problem because summer wasn't rubbish this year. Mm. So we were like away shooting weddings and the people who, we've got freelancers who work with us because um, Cornwall's full of creatives, everyone's quite up for like a bit of a side hustle. So, you know, like a lot of the people who I come in- I can see and, you knocking on that yeah. door. <laughs> yeah. It's like um, one of our good friends, Louise, who, who does some stuff with us. She's actually a fashion photographer, but because your year isn't like solid, you can always do something else on the yeah. side. And they're all set up to declare their income. So it's perfect, really. Yeah. Um, but they were sort of calling us and being like, hi, um, I know you're in Italy, but like we haven't got any of this anymore. Can you order some things? Like, so actually the whole summer was like backpedaling because we hadn't ordered enough stock and mm. then having yeah. to get all of that stuff in place. It takes, it's quite annoying to make cable. It's, it's got a lot of components and, um, you know, there's a lot of um, moving parts in our supply chain. So if you miss something, don't order something in time, it really affects sales because then you're just constantly going out of stock. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, we definitely then made sure we bought in loads of stock for this winter and we're so far... It's going great, yeah. yeah touch wood. It's amazing. It just goes to show, doesn't it? Like, you never quite know. No. You know, like, you're talking about mothballing it, and, you know, you could have you could have done that from an experience that would have been the, the wise and sensible move yeah. to make, but actually, that's not how it played out. No, like, yeah. de-mothball, quick! Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, I'm enjoying my life shooting a wedding in Lake Como, and I've got loads of emails being like, I need you to order this, I need you to order this, this wholesale person wants this. So, like... We always, we're, like Kat said earlier, you have to be adaptable. Like in a small business, it's adapt or yeah. die. Um, so we actually, we've taken on Kat's sister now. She's the head of wholesale and she has been amazing because I had got to the point where I was like, well, both of us, we were just doing too much. Like you can't, you literally can't do everything. Um, and there has to be a point where you just recognize that and be like, I'm going to find the right person. They're going to take that over. I'm a control freak. I hate giving other people stuff because I'm like, I'll do it better. I know. Actually, in this case, like sp particularly with Lizzie, like she will definitely do a better job than me because she's got she's actually got a background in like account management and stuff. And I don't. We're, we're opposite on that. So Ash is like, I yeah. need to do this, and I'm like, I want to find someone to give this to because I can't bother to do that anymore. Checks out. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> between us, we're yeah. like a normal person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> opposite yeah. end of the scale. Cash. Yeah, I like cash. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Lizzie's Lizzie's been great because um, she actually knows how to talk to shops and find out what they want. On. and we just never had the time for that and it's it was really stupid because Abel is such a it's one of those things where if you see it and you smell the oils you're probably going to buy it so it's kind of weird that e-commerce has gone so well for yeah. us we'll make um, sure we put it on now and everybody else here yeah. is just going to make sure <laughs> yeah. they actually get it go on yeah. guys <laughs> so it's been it's it's lovely to have people helping because there are so many aspects to a business like that yeah. and I think actually it really made us realize how lovely our photography business is like yeah. they're quite low maintenance businesses there's no stock um you're like because we're in weddings our couples are always happy like it is you know, like it's it's a dick. Abel's yeah. made me realize being a wedding photographer is literally the perfect job like you're gonna yeah. go and spend the best day of someone's life with them you've got to actually be a bit, be a bit of an idiot if you mess that up like to, to deliver it like really well and be, do a great job is quite easy like it's not like with Abel, oh man, honestly, the amount of things you get, people getting in touch with you, they'll be like, we'll get emails and they're like, oh, the, the box is a bit beaten up. And we're like, okay, just let us know what's broken, we'll replace it. Like, oh, nothing's broken. Like, <laughs> so, so all of this is a waste of my yeah. time then. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It's just, um, it's like, I think both of us started in retail, didn't we? Like when yeah. we were very young. Yeah. And it's right back to that, like, just customer facing like in a way like you never are in a photography business like yes you're customer facing but like this in this well, you for the one day sort of thing day. You're, you're dealing with 30 customers probably on a day-to-day -day basis yeah yeah, yeah. Because the numbers are very different aren't they exactly so how um, has your wedding photographer business changed ever since abel was born um, that's a great question, a question. I I think before you ask that is everyone alright by the way everyone okay <laughs> yeah I completely forgot before we get into this question I completely forgot earlier on at the start of this episode that um, I had something to tell you okay um, I tried to, I 
tried to get a Santa Claus. <gasps> <laughs> I'm really sorry, but he stood me up. He stood you up? He stood me up. Well, as soon as I called Father Christmas, uh, it wasn't Father... Have you was been a naughty boy Paul. this year? His that's, name was Paul. That's what it Let's is. call him Paul. <laughs> he, asked, he asked me who it was for, and I, t- I tried to describe what we were doing and straight away in my head I'm like he thinks I'm an idiot <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I want this for a laugh and I did kind of want it for a bit of a laugh I thought it'd be great if he just rocked up so and basically like, I've been stood up been stood up by Father Christmas but I did have something else in mind oh <laughs> hold on, hold on. does that mean Sam's on the naughty list <laughs> this is why people should watch on YouTube <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's rising he's actually rising he go. rises from the basket <laughs> Amazing. That is the best thing ever. I was going to say, she seems a bit deflated. That's alright then. Just leave him there. Just leave him there. Hi, Paul. Big fan. (laughs) Fuck you, Paul. (laughs) Been standing me up. Who do you think you are? I like his stats. Make sure we can see him on this. Santa! <laughs> he is that. He is that. So yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. Just a nice story to share with you. Sorry to break up. Where were we? What were we talking about? People who are watching on YouTube are yeah. like, what on earth? A yeah. giant inflatable Santa just appeared from a basket, <laughs> and he was a bit deflated at first, but now he's here. also as well. Eight quid from Morrison's. It was half price. How much? Eight quid. I'm gonna eight. get. Oh, absolutely. I've got that one. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna move on a little bit because it's freaking you out. <laughs> <laughs> We can we can deflate him in a minute. We can deflate him. It's fine. There he is. Okay. The other way. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Amazing. No, we were on. How has Abel being born affected your wedding photography business? Uh, Yeah. So I think. Do you know what? It's actually been really really good for wedding photography. Uh, It's enabled us to be a lot more confident with our pricing. A lot more confident with what we say yes to. Um, And also, so for example, this year. I said to, we basically had this discussion and we were like let's not take any weddings after October so on the 29th of October I shot my last wedding in London and let me tell you that is <laughs> the dream yeah. it is so good so I've had like all this time to just focus on Abel um, we mate shooting weddings in like five degrees is not the one not the that one. sucks like Group it's really shots bad in January yeah, yeah. it's tough <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> disgusting and like we've done our time we've done years of that yeah. and yeah. we're just like do you know what for once even if because sometimes you can you can get something right and then the year after that it doesn't work. So, but we'll take this for a win. It's really lovely to mm-hmm. not yeah. have to work in the winter. Yeah, and um, it's, there has been a lot of uh, spinning different plates, <laughs> a lot of trying to um, multitask on a lot of things and just being really conscious about dividing up our time. Um, we've got a lot more help on Able, haven't we, for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, essentially it's Able that fits it, not Springles, because... Yeah. Um, we love Abel, but she's like a difficult toddler. Whereas Sprinkles is like <laughs> Sprinkles is like our firstborn amazing child. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. But our heart is there. Um, Abel is very much more of like a business decision. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's much more, yeah. Whereas photography is our passion. Um, so Abel has to fit round. And I was saying to um, are they're they kind of quite equal in terms of the makeup, like in terms of like how much income they generate now. Like no, I mean no. Abel's still about three times what the yeah. Sprinkles is, yeah. Yeah. but. It's, I mean, not in profit. So not like, in income, in yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Turnover, yeah. In turnover, yeah. So um, we... Oh, because I know, I know people will probably do the maths in their mind. Do we need to turn Santa off? Is the fan yeah. a bit He's too loud shouting. for you? <laughs> I'll, turn, I'll turn Santa <laughs> off for now. Yeah. Santa! Yeah, Paul. Hold on. I mean, you couldn't have just deflated Paul when he annoyed you, could you? So at least there's that. <laughs> Just look at that, just look at that. So sad, so cool. That was amazing. That was worth the money. (laughs) Best eight quid I've ever spent, that is. Um, well done. Oh, what was I going to ask it. you then? What were we talking about? You said, Turnover. Um, people are yes, so right. Yes, yeah. people will do that. They'll think, you know, like, obviously, you know, you're selling this volume of able burners, and yep. they cost how much? They cost uh, fifty, 50 pounds now. When we, when we so, started, they were like you know. thirty quid, and we. But, really, really really but, but like you but like you've like you've already talked about in, in, in talking to us about the business setup, you know, you've got an, you've got a unit, you've got yeah. staff, yeah. you've got material costs, you've yeah. got VAT, you've got uh, website running corporation costs. tax. Yeah. You know, there's there's all sorts of things. When you strip those out, you you know, you're probably not making much. I don't yeah, know. So no, honestly, but, so but the first I'm, I'm, no. I'm just trying to, I'm, I suppose I'm just trying to paint the picture of it. It's very easy to look yeah. at it and go, Oh, you're putting all that money in your building savings account. Yeah, but exactly. actually, you know, and so I think the first year was two hundred and fifty turnover and forty K profit. 
So realistically, like for the amount of time and energy and money, like 40k is one salary, and like there was both of us doing and that. We didn't, but we didn't take the 40k, did we? No, that we took it gets reinvested. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. we reinvested 10. Yeah. Um, whereas this year, as I was saying to you, Sam, earlier, like the reinvestment for this year is everything. Yeah. Because it had to pay us during COVID and it was too young to do that. And it shouldn't have had to do that so mm-hmm. early. Like most people who start a business wouldn't expect to take money from it within the first five years. Um, we did have to do that. So this year we were like, do you know what? Sprinkles is back online. We can handle it. Um, all the money that Abel makes this year is going back into the business. Yep. Um, so we've always had like a really a strong reinvestment ethic with Abel. Um, you know, it's funny because actually one of the main things that gets said to us online, like by trolls, is, uh, um, oh, I can make that for a tenner. You absolutely can't. Yeah. And you I, really I've, can't. I've started replying to me like, I'll tell you what, mate, if you can, I'll start <laughs> Let me know. Yeah. 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 You can be my yeah. supplier. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, you can make one for a tenner, probably. Um, current price of lumber, probably not, though. Yeah. Um, but you definitely can't make, I mean, we must be at like, Six, seven thousand units now, something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. I've stopped. I've stopped if anyone counting. can make them for a tenner, you guys can make them for a tenner. So if you're saying you yeah. can't make them for a tenner, yeah. I'm going to yeah. take your word and for also, it. And also, you know, yeah, I mean, in terms of like, you know, our um, the process. So the bases now they're outsourced to someone for. Uh, the wood. So basically, he's got a wood shop. Uh, he's in so Cornwall. You, you don't yeah. stick them outside under your patio heater exactly. anymore. <laughs> and like, yeah. even okay. now we've got this massive unit. Like, I'm not spending my time cutting wood. Like, before we outsourced them, my whole week was cutting, sealing, and sanding wood. I can't spend all my time doing that. Yeah. Like, you know, the business doesn't grow. So we've outsourced the wood now, but obviously, you have to then pay their rates, which is fine. Like, that's a fair price for those. But yeah, like Kat said, you can make one yourself in your garage and it's going to cost you a little bit less. But you can't turn that into a business. It's like it does not scale. And I think the other thing is we've tried to be, we want to make good decisions. Like I, I always yeah. say we're a soul led business. And I know that people are like, ugh, that's gross. <laughs> what I mean by that is I don't really care about the bottom line as much as I care about how it feels because I don't want to be in a business that makes me feel icky. Mm. Um, so for example, we wanted to keep that we were handmade in Cornwall. So when we were overwhelmed by uh, the amount of bases we were having to make. We were like, we've got two decisions here. We can either become a wood shop and we have to buy the correct machines and everything like that. Because we were cutting them literally by hand before. Yeah. Um, or we find another family business that has those machines. So we found a father and son business, which is about 20 minutes down the road from us. And this is something that they do for a living. And we were like, that's a good way of us moving part of the business, yeah. outsourcing something. And it feels lovely. You know, you it's walk in... Yeah, you know, ethical. It's yeah, it's in Cornwall. Puts money back into Cornwall, which it desperately needs. Yeah, um, and just in terms of sourcing things, like if it can be made in Cornwall, it's getting made in Cornwall. It yeah. will be more expensive, you know, but that's how it's going to be done. And we're always trying to bring stuff. If we can't do it straight away, we'll try and find a way to bring it back into Cornwall. Um, and those decisions cost money. And even things like doing something um, that's right for the environment. Uh, will cost more money so like yeah. I can pack Abel in uh, styrofoam for like n- no money at all but to use compostable packaging peanuts made of potato starch costs quite a lot of money so but we were like we're not going to do anything that feels rubbish because I think if you're going to be in that business it needs to be something that is like reinforcing yeah. Yeah. for you um, and not something that makes you feel like a grotty person yeah. who's doing bad for the planet and yeah exactly. yeah for sure. So that definitely adds a lot of cost. <laughs> Trying to be ethical is expensive. <laughs> it's just really nice to hear though, isn't it? I think, you know, we live in an age where everyone's like driven by profits and margins and, yeah. mm-hmm. and actually like to put what you, val- what you value at the core of your business and be like, if it's going to work, it's going to work this way. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think people do see it. They, they do see that with the product. I think, mm. I think when you look at the brand and, and what you put out, it does, you know, it really comes across and I think you'll, you know, your business will benefit because of it. Yeah. Um, the one thing that really stands out for me is, is is about how you've really had to adapt quickly and be flexible. And it's one thing we talked about with Lucy, I think, on one of the previous episodes about kind of, you know, not letting your kind of like this is my business plan. I'm going to stick to it. I, like I'm never going to never going to waver from it. You've had you know, businesses constantly evolving and adapting, and you've you know you're kind of like the epitome of that. Really, I, I don't see anybody that's, that could provide a, a much better example of it. You know, constantly having to flex and adapt and move and alter is just yeah. it's quite astonishing really it's also exhausting like <laughs> yeah. constantly exhausting because you're, you sell it Come you're on. always having to find like the way out basically that's yeah. what you're doing and yeah it does suck but, but yeah, when you, you go through it like that's when you find the magic and that's yeah. where you um 
I don't know, like, yeah. Do I have, like it. It's, it's kind of like a game. I feel like it's a game we're yeah. playing. And sometimes you feel like you're winning. Sometimes you feel like you're losing. But once you get to a point where you're like, okay, that's pretty much sorted now. You like, passed that level. Exactly. Got on to yeah. the next one. I think it's just, like, I'm always drawing... And Ash is like, oh, you sound so weird. But analogies between doing business this way and farming. We live in farmland. like So we see the farmers turning the fields around. And um, every day as I'd be driving, I'm like, oh, he's sown clover now to put the nitrates back in the soil. And oh, the sheep are back in now. And you can see the farmer like using and resting the land, using and resting the land. And I was like, that's how business is. You can't always be going. So when those times are, like when you um, have quieter times in business, how can you now sow into the future? Mm. What crop could you put in now um, that can be doing well? Um, Like the farmer can't sell us the clover to eat. It's purely to regenerate the soil. Um, And so like, yeah, it's a bit of like a game, but I think also business is a bit of an analogy for life, isn't it? Because it it does change and flex and bend and it's never reliable. And I think people sometimes think that business is this very logical thing. And I don't think either of us see it that way. It's like a creative, dynamic, moving thing, just like a field or your family life or... That's incredible. Yeah, that's an incredible analogy. Shame on you for thinking that was a weird <laughs> analogy. Shame on you. That was brilliant. That's amazing. Yeah, and I think it's, it's so good. It's such a good one as well for me to think about that analogy when I need to rest as well. Yeah. Because um, mm. it's really hard, isn't it, to like f- um, quantify rest? Um, because you, you're so used to being productive, and that you can put a value so, on that yeah. really easily. Yeah. Um, but actually, like. When the farmer puts the clover in, it has no use other than to rest the ground for future productivity. So yeah. sometimes if I can say to myself, right, I've just sown a field of clover now, so I'm just gonna, that's it. I'm just gonna enjoy this season yeah. Yeah. of it being. And you're really good at that and I'm not. Cat's my off switch. <laughs> She's the one that tells me to stop. Um, but yeah, tells honestly, me to stop. Like, it's unreal though. Cause what like for me, when I relax is like, um, being in a sauna or a hot tub or like a hot bath. Just mainly hot things. Hot things. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mate, I have my best ideas when I stop and like actually have time yeah, to yeah. do that. And like half the stuff we've done for Abel has literally come from us resting. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, mm-hmm. oh, we've, we've talked about that with uh, the people that's been to my uh, Rachel and Darius, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Like they would go out and walk the dog and that's when they have, the, oh God, I've had this idea. You know, it's, yeah. <coughs> I, you know, I'm the same. It's like, I'll get into bed and I'm like, Oh, I've had an idea. Yeah. Like, yeah. where's that off switch? But it's because I'm just naturally in a resting state and I'm ready to kind of, you know, you, you do. You have to give yourself that time to just breathe and, 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 and let ideas in, don't you? It's yeah, exactly. Like, and I think also having time to connect with who you are. Because mm. I think, do you know, it's really funny because I feel like the, uh, the inspirational speaker circuit is quite well run now, isn't it? Whereas I think we were listening to stuff like that maybe eight years ago when other people didn't really listen to things like that. Um, and... What was my point going to be? I totally <laughs> oh. forgot. You were always there. Just having having time resting. to rest and breathe and yeah. To, so those to are, let those are the in. moments where you're really your, the most yourself, yeah. right? So when you're at peace with yourself and this is the most you that you can be, in comes an idea, and I think it comes out of. And this is where I was going. Um, a lot of speakers say, like, "What have you got in your hand? What's unique to you?" Because mm. um, a lot of people are like, "I would like to start a business. What idea can I have to start a business?" <laughs> yeah. But they haven't actually sat with themselves and been like, "Sorry, I've got yeah. to start with who am I?" Yeah. And it's actually because you can't fake it. No. no. Exactly. And I think that like good business comes out of being authentic, doesn't it? Like mm. we've all mm. had those. Like nightmare clients come out of you saying yes to something that didn't feel right normally, yep. um, and and bad situations well, normally come out of you doing something. Like, like look at look at us all as wedding photographers, right? We all got into it because we had this just absolute passion for just going and taking photos for free. Nah, I just wanted the money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know but I, 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 I know people that I know people that are just in it just to try and make a quick buck. Yeah. And if you're in it to make a quick book, you, you, you're going to you know, be gone within six yeah. months. Always those ones that are looking over their shoulder, comparing themselves to other people, yeah, being like, why, they, why is their workshop sold out? Why can't I do that? And like, yeah. those are the ones you hear moaning the most. Yeah, I I'm, think that's actually like so seasonal for me right now because I think people, you know, when we sat down, you guys said some really nice stuff about us that I don't perceive us that way. And you were like, oh, oh everyone's talking about you. And it's really funny because I think we're quite insular and we don't really like put ourselves out there very often we barely um, instagram we i mean barely instagram. we're not ed peers with 10 posts a year but we don't instagram <laughs> that, more, but yeah. I, I aspire to ed peers levels of non-engagement with social yeah, it yeah. Is, I, I love that i really but most, that about most people can't do that no but um i think it's really easy to get caught up isn't it in all of that and all of that comparison and um 
I was actually reflecting last night on a couple of years ago, I unfollowed everyone who did what I did for a living from my personal account and was just like, I'm not going to look at what anyone else is doing anymore. I'm, I'm so tired. Why? Mm. Yeah, from caring. And why, I, why did you unfollow everybody? Because was I was purpose? just exhausted yeah. by seeing... I couldn't look at somebody else's work and not measure myself. Mm. And I didn't want to do that. I think that I became conscious that I was doing it. And I was like, you're sucking the joy out of everything you yeah. do. What is it? Comparison, Comparison to the thief of joy. joy. Exactly. Um, and I was like, that is literally happening to me. And I was like, I'm going to unfollow everyone. Not out of disrespect for anyone. Mm. Just out of like, I can't be healthy in this environment. And it was the best thing I ever did. And I think my best work has happened since I did that. Because instead of... And I think you're the same, yep. right? Instead of your work coming from a place of comparison, it's coming from what's authentically you and the influences that are in your head. Um, whatever it is that you're interested in is going to replicate in your work, isn't it? Yeah. And I think if actually what you're interested in is what everybody else is doing, what kind of a weird thing is it that you're making yeah. over here? When you when you say that, oh, I'm, I'm sure everybody in the room would have kind of agreed. They're going, they're going yeah. Yeah, that is that does make total sense. But sometimes, be, you know, this is kind of why we do the podcast. Is sometimes you just need to be told that by somebody. Yeah, like yeah, I need you to say to me, I need to go and unfollow. I said to you at the beginning, like before when we got here, when you got here earlier, like how do I just unfollow everybody from Instagram? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I've just over the years, I've just got to a stage where I follow almost four thousand people, and I'm like, and I do scroll and I do look on Instagram and I do follow stuff, and and there are people genuinely there that I do want to follow and see. Yeah. You know, um, it's not just you, Igor. Like, I do like. I mean, you don't even put yourself out enough anyway. But that's a story for another day. Um, but yeah, like you, you saying that is like it's almost like I'm sat here going, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah. And it, our, I, our approach always has been like it's us against us. We're like we're only ever comparing ourselves yeah, to it. yesterday, and like, are we doing better than we did yesterday? How do we feel? How does this sit with our life? Is this the right thing for us? Like Kat said, like the minute you're comparing that work to other people, like I, I remember there was one year where I was particularly bad at it. I was looking at Jim Pollard's work and I was like, he's literally in New Zealand up the side of a mountain. Obviously, Surrey Woods doesn't look the same and it's <laughs> never going to be the same. But like, that doesn't mean my work's bad. And actually, it was funny because I had that week and then the next week he commented on one of our photos being like, oh, I love this. And I was like, what? What if he's in New Zealand looking at Surrey being like, I wish I was in the woods? Yes. Like, you don't know what that he's person He's obviously thinks. Like, just become a master of his own environment exactly. and his own backyard, which yeah. I love. But that's authentic And to he's him. not lucky. Yeah. He's a really very skilled person who can use a really challenging environment. Yeah. And, and yeah, but there's no, there is no comparison. You don't have helicopters don't, and mountains in Surrey, We don't have to make Surrey, a comparison. No. And there's probably <laughs> so many challenges that come with helicopters yeah. and mountains. Oh, the sa- even just but, the safety levels involved yeah. in that are like mm. crazy. But I think, do you know, what is the lovely thing is like if you do unfollow people who make you feel not good you will actually recover um and what i noticed is that um and this was radical for me is i was like i'm feeling jealousy as inspiration now so i got myself to a point where you know when you look at someone and i actually said it to you when i came into your space this morning i was like yeah. i love this i'm jealous of you and i love that i'm jealous of you because that means you've inspired me if you start noticing jealousy mm. every time you feel it as like oh, that person's doing something that I'm, I would want for me. Yeah. What is it? And actually, the more you look at it like that, the more you will just feel jealousy as inspiration. Yeah, break it down. And it's so nice. And actually, like I started surfing when we moved to Cornwall and I'd watch people doing, I'm really not a good surfer, but I try. And that's the main thing in everything. Everyone and you love doing it. Like you I love it. Dryer. I yeah. love my awful surfing. <laughs> and then I'd watch people doing these amazing things and I'd just be like, I'm so inspired by you. And actually, the emotion of inspiration and jealousy feels exactly mm. the same. Um, so it's it's nice to but think that... just being able to celebrate other people's successes yeah. as well, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. You know, rather just... than seeing other people and going, oh, they're lucky. Oh, God, I hate yeah. how they've done that. You know, actually, if you can switch that in your mind to be, actually, what they've done is incredible. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm inspired by that. And yeah. I want to... Do you know yeah. what? I want to be a cheerleader for these people as well. Like, yeah. um, like, we've become really good friends with Benjamin Wheeler. And like oh, he, man, when he shot that yeah. raw wedding last year, I was like, "Mate, these are incredible! Like, I'm yeah, so yeah. happy for you." Yeah. Like you are. He's literally like doing the on best the flip, work. On of the his flip life. side of that coin, there will be people that would have looked at that and gone, "Oh, who's he? You know, Why did he get he it? Yeah. He How's he got that so job? Lucky. How, yeah, yeah, he's dead lucky. He's yeah. dead lucky. Lucky. That's always the he one. He's literally the nicest it's, it's person. It's which in the mindset world, do you so. want to be? In? Like, which one do you want to be in? If you're in that camp, it's if you're going to be in that camp of like bitterness and. It's, you're never, it's never going to help you grow or develop exactly. yourself. And also, the whole time you're looking at other people being like, they're so lucky, they're this, oh, yeah. it's because of this, it's because their parents are rich, it's whatever. Yeah. The opportunities that you have in your life that are unique to you oh, you're missing are them. being yeah. thrown at you're you and you're them. missing them. Yeah. Because yeah. you're so busy comparing yeah. 
like we've had like there's been challenges in able where like we've had some trademark issues and we're uh in, we're imitated quite a lot and i say to ash like obviously you have to deal with that stuff but also whilst looking forward to the whole time because the minute you're in the rear view mirror looking at what somebody else is doing you've lost your trajectory yeah um and i think that's yeah. what instagram was doing to me with the photography side is like i was just looking yeah it's almost like looking backwards while you're trying to yeah. move forwards with this conversation, which I think it's perfect, really, I'm thinking people would be looking at your business in terms of what you've done with Springles. People will be looking at Able and everything else, and it's, oh, it looks amazing. Hard work, darn hard work, but it looks amazing. So with all of that said, what does success mean for you guys? Time. Time. It's always been time. Mm. Like, so for the first three years of our kids' life, we were just wedding photographers, so... Uh, they were born in 2017, January. I left my full-time job in April and we flew straight to Antigua to shoot a wedding out there. Took the twins with us. Love Antigua. Oh, mate, Where did you go in Antigua? Uh, it was, it was like just like a resort-based wedding, wasn't it? Um, you go to English Harbour? The, the veranda, it was called. Yeah. No, we didn't. No. Well, no. Do you know, we had three-month-old yeah. twins, so yeah, we, yeah, we didn't do enough. much. And actually, yeah. I think I've learned on destination to stop, because you know when you, you go somewhere new and your natural tendency is to run around the whole place and absolutely exhaust yourself? Yeah. I've learned to not do that. Yeah. So yeah. I've learned to just go somewhere and be like, what do I actually have time to do? And yeah. let's just do that. Yeah. And be like, I'll come back if it's really great. That's exactly yeah. So yeah, we've great got to go there. back there, haven't we? So yeah. it's... So yeah, that, um, that first year we shot, I think it was 43 weddings, which was our first year just working for ourselves. Um, other than those actual wedding days, we literally spent every day with our kids. So we were both there when they first talked, when they first walked, when we just spent our whole days. They would nap in the middle of the day, I'd edit some weddings, Cat would cull, and then we'd work in the night. evening yeah, as well. You wouldn't, have, uh, you wouldn't have had those experiences had you been in that office exactly. from exactly. You know, Mate, eight, honestly, eight till seven on just, a weekend yeah. as well. Yeah. Actually, now, I, was saying, I was talking to Cat the other day, like... I consider my, I, was, I think we were more successful when we just had the Springles and we had more time than now. Yeah. But that is just a season. Like we, like we, we kind of have an idea with Abel that we're going to try and grow it to a point and then we'll figure out from there whether we want to try and sell it or whether we try and just put loads more staff in and we kind of just take a back seat and don't actually do the hands-on stuff. Um, just watch the money roll in. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was that easy. Have that building society account. <laughs> <Exactly. again. laughs> Get one of those. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. I think that's, the, that's such an important thing about success is that um, I think it's like quite well run now because people, there are so many speakers out there who'll, who'll give you these tools. But um, for me, figuring that out about success was something that I had to do on my own. No, I never heard anybody on a podcast say, success is only what it means to you um i just sort of figured it out on my own and um there's been times like i remember we were really busy with abel and we were on the beach and i just said to you we're doing really well and i feel really unsuccessful because mm -hmm. i was losing my time with my kids i wasn't able to get to the beach as often i wasn't surfing as often and i was like i just feel like a failure even though the money was going really well and i think actually it's like a again like a moving thing you constantly have to revisit and remind yourself mm. what your version of success is because yep. the world will keep telling you that it's money, cars, yeah. holidays, and yep. all of that stuff. And this is why, in some ways, I love how you answered that question because you literally, you didn't even bat an no. eye. <laughs> it was literally, I know exactly what it, it is. That's not Mr. Time. question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What did Ash say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, I think it's, it's such an important thing, really, for, for, for creative entrepreneurs, really, to know what what that looks like for them really oh, yeah, absolutely. what what is the thing that you actually want to get out of life within within your business um, what does success look like for you what is going to feed your soul in some ways when you close the doors of your business you go to your family what is the thing that's going to sort of like fill your heart really so yeah. no that's great are you asking me that it's like you're no, looking no. at me kind of I'm just looking at you what do you want to do I'm not answering Sam's not sweating brand new BMW one I want the big reveal yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, it's been amazing to have you guys here. Um, I feel like... Uh, We're now on 25 in, guys. I know, I know. It doesn't really? feel like it. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel like it. I told you, once you get well, you going, that's, guys, it. Yeah. that's it. That's it. You... I could go all day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one thing that I wanted to touch upon, and we sort of like going up and down, really, so it m might feel like a left field question, but literally doing research on you guys, I was like, your marketing shops are really like incredible, really. So for anyone that sort of like, even if it's wedding photography or someone that wants to start sort of like a physical business, any sort of like tips that you guys would be able to give in terms of that sort of aspect? Whether it's for wedding photography or... For marketing, yeah, or particularly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, 
I can, I can, I think this you is what you would say. Okay. Um, we'll see. Well, I'll do a deep dive on who you are <laughs> is what yeah. I would say. Um, when we started the Springles, we literally did. Do, do you remember a spider diagram from school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Start in the middle and then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oops, uh, yeah, we were literally like, you put because this is a collaboration. I think people forget that. Like, yeah, Springles, the Springles is, a, is yeah. a collaborative thing. So actually, each of us is a photographer in their own right. There's no lead and second. And we both work to a brief, which is we the actually, Springles. We actually don't even shoot together anymore. Like We used to shoot exclusively yeah. as husband and wife, but we just take we separate weddings separately now. Own. But you, it doesn't matter who you get because the Springles is a brief that we both work to. So when we started the business, we were like, well, that's complicated, isn't it? Because you've got two egos. You've got two, actually two aesthetics St- yeah styles and two different ways of seeing things so we were like in terms of like figuring out our brand we need to look at what we have in common so i put my name in the middle of the spider diagram and he put his and then we worked out like we put things that were important to us music that we liked you know all these little things that kind of came off like who we were and then we sat down with each other's one and figured out where the parallels were yeah. and we were like that's the basis of our brand um and it was Things like slow living, being intentional, having time with family, seeing the world. Um, but actually, like it would often be the tasks that that means. So, like having a proper coffee machine was actually more about. I mean, yes, drinking a good coffee, but like the slow process exactly. of making a coffee. So, what does that mean? That means slow living. So, like sometimes it's more about like what does that thing actually mean for your life (laughs) yeah so we'd be like oh you put coffee i put coffee why did you put coffee oh because i just really love it when you sit there with a great coffee yeah yeah. yeah. you're simon sinek the the heck out of your life start Start with why um and so when we started doing our we did this unstoppable workshop and we were weird because we started teaching other photographers in like year Two. two Um, Incredible. But it, it was because we were like, we don't actually know a lot right now because we're in year two, but we do know how we started, so we can teach mm, you about year it. one. So ours was like, how to build a business, not look how great I am at. And it wasn't even how to. It was like <laughs> this all, is just how. Just to we... touch on that, there's always this myth, though, isn't there, around like uh, people that are educated just have to be like really established mm, and they go for a long time. Yeah. Actually, Such a lie, actually, big actually, lie. The amount of people out there that have, there are always people beneath you that yeah. want to learn. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether you're at like a level three or a level nine. Yeah. Like. It's just, is it in your makeup to want to help people beneath you? That they're, they're, they're there. There's always exactly. a Yeah, and do you feel like you've got something to say yeah. at this season of your life? Like yeah. right now, I have, I don't have anything to add. Do you know what I mean? Like we stopped doing Unstoppable because we were like, we feel like we've said that. And we've done lots and lots of them because we just did groups of six at yeah. our house. So we did quite a few. And then we were like, we're not in that season anymore. The content that we were teaching is now quite old, but we haven't got anything new to say. Um, and I think actually it's almost easier in the beginning to have something to say because it's so fresh. Whereas now if someone's like, why do you do that that way? I'd be like, mm. oh, I've just kind of always done it. Yeah. That way. And I'd forget the original motivation. Yeah. You also have like a new angry toddler to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Such yeah. An angry toddler, honestly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I think if you're starting something, you need to spend some time with yourself, I think. I, I am clearly quite hippy dippy in my approach to this stuff and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> no, it's not amazing at all, it's great. Mind, but would you agree, like, dig into who you are? 100%. And what it is that you're about because that is the only thing that's going to be different yeah. to what else is on the market. Well, the, the surface level answer to that is like the find your passion thing, isn't it? Which yeah. is a bit, yeah. a bit fluffy. But actually what you're passion. saying is kind of like, <laughs> Just dig deeper into what it is, like yeah. what it is. And that ties and back into with. what you were saying earlier, but just being authentic to yourself. Yeah. And like, if you're going to work for yourself, it will be difficult. Like, it's there's absolutely don't have any preconception that it's the, the easy way to do things. It's not like the easiest thing is just go and get a job somewhere else. But if you do want to work for yourself, if you're going to be authentic to yourself and figure out exactly why you're doing it, it's a lot easier to go through that tough stuff. Like when you're being kept awake at night, you keep that focus of like why I'm doing this. Mm always put that at the forefront of your and you, you won't be able to mind. do anything off brand if you're cause i think people are like you've built a really strong oh, brand. you get, like, you get found out and just yeah, yeah. Get found out. Get undone, i can't yeah. do anything off brand because all we're doing is what we like like yeah. i just won't do anything i don't like like if i if i'm making decisions about like how photography will look for abel or how the bottles will look if i don't like it it's not like I. It's not happening. if we don't <laughs> yeah like it, she always has a go at me for that it's yeah. <laughs> yeah we always have to remind each other that like no, I don't it's need... the the royal eye, the royal eye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then it won't happen so it's really it's really not that we've built a brand it's just that we've we're just doing what we like and then you can't actually go off brand mm. yeah. because it's you yeah and it's 
And people then are like, there's something different about your photography work. There's something different about what you're doing with Abel. And I'm like, I think I know what it is. I think it's authenticity. Yeah. And I think as human beings, I know that sounded really arrogant, but what I mean by that is... <laughs> no, I don't think it's at all. No, I think it's... You're so much more of a... Uh, instinctual being than you think you are and actually people read inauthenticity mm. really really easily but they just don't know they've done it they just feel like baseline uncomfortable about something mm. or they're looking at a photo and it's not filling them with joy but they don't really know where mm. that's coming from yeah. but I think if they um, if you dig into it it's whether that's come from an authentic place whoever's made that thing mm. um, that's what we've always said like with people so we've had a like Kat said a few uh, instances where people have copied the burner and we had this there was one particular one which is really bad where like all of their website copy was like oh we live living they by the ocean it was like was it called Fable? really <laughs> similar and they lived in the middle of the country Fable north. burners Fable burners <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, we do own the Babel trademark, burns. so yeah. you can't just do exactly. that. Exactly. This is that's a registered design now, so like anyone who does that, there is actual legal proceedings. We can go down. I don't want to do that. But, um, so it's a, we, this actual this actual structure, this this yeah. kind of combination of a, a glass yeah. bottle with a copper pipe and, and a plinth. some variations. Yeah, as well. it's a wow. yes yeah, registered. Incredible. Like, we spent thousands in lawyers and like proper trademarking and stuff. Yeah. So that is a registered design. It can't be painted because a painting works on how something works and that's yeah. not new but the just diffuser. Yeah. So, so don't um, go on Dragon's Den asking for well <laughs> we did we get invited on Dragon's Den did you yeah. Yeah. so for ages I, we couldn't talk about it I can, I can see it I can see it and there's Deborah Mead just asking mm. so have you got your patents exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. we actually turned it down yeah um, it didn't fit with I us I just well, I thought we this is actually the one time we disagreed fell yeah. out over business because we were Ash really wanted to do Dragon's Den and I was like doesn't sit well with me because ultimately I felt like we were going to end up answering to somebody mm, who yeah. didn't understand us who didn't understand the business and would be talking to me about bottom lines when I'm like I want to go down the park with my kids so mm. I'm be here right now yeah um because we... I'm always going to put them first and not Deborah yeah. Meaden or she seems great but I'm sorry I don't know her <laughs> yeah. I mean Deborah Deborah is a Deborah. big fan of another idea <laughs> she, will, she will be listening she, she will be listening we, it was when we worked out because you well, had to so we we never uh submitted for it but someone they from the BBC they actually approached you yeah, it just shows us. doesn't yeah, it you kind of like see and, and I think a lot of people would have gone oh let's go for it yeah this is our big break this is our yeah. opportunity so we did so to hear you say no it doesn't sit right with us do you know it how many times feel... I've been told I'm an idiot like for not taking it but well, well it took I, a while I, I so we, went, we actually went through the who process called you, who called you an idiot <laughs> loads of people man like literally anyone anyone who goes you should go on that show and I'm like we turned it down they just go idiot <laughs> It's literally the immediate reaction, yeah. but I'm fine with it. So we actually went through the process. We, we did, did like a pitch audition. We met with the production team and all of that stuff. Um, and then we were going to have a, um, we were about to set our filming date, but they, um, basically we were arguing about it. And it was, it was a point where we just couldn't agree and we didn't like, we, I just didn't know what to do. So um, in the end, I actually called Johnny MP, who's a very good friend yeah. of ours. Um, he helped us a lot in our first year of wedding photography. Award-winning Johnny MP. Yeah. Award-winning Johnny MP. <laughs> yeah, I love Johnny. And he, so in our first year, he was like, don't shoot more than 20 weddings. You're going to kill yourself if you're working full time. And like, he just has been instrumental and in you making... you didn't listen to him. No, we, we didn't. Him no. Yeah. 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 But we should listen to him. Yeah. We should listen more often. Um, so I called him and I was like, mate, this is going on. Like me and Kat can't agree. And he was like, why did you start the Springles? And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, well, you started Able in the pandemic. That's helped you get through the pandemic. Why did you start the Springles? And I was like, oh, you know, to, to work for ourselves, to have more time in our lives, to design our own life. And he was like, is that what a dragon will give you? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's uh, it's only what Kat's been saying the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes you need that, that other person that yeah, yeah, is not yeah. so close to you. You need that other perspective to kind of like, oh, yeah. It's that moment yeah. of clarity, isn't it? Yeah. 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 To be so fair, he, and he, said... So he was like, you're going to be committed to paying them dividends for the next however long. And one of the parts of the process was like, come up with a business plan of how you will pay that dragon back. And Exit then what, what profit they'll get and how long they'll yeah. get that for. And it was then that yeah. we were like... No. That's like a 10, 15 year, possibly more commitment. I mean, Although I did then find out that the new dragon was Stephen Bartlett and I was a little bit gutted yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who's that guy? Yeah. I have said to Ash, like, you know, sometimes when you work in partnership like this, you just have to be like that person, even in like marriage, do you know what? You have to just be like, they want it and I have to trust that they 
like that if they think it's right sometimes you just got to fall in yeah so i had said to him like if it's really that important to you and you really believe in it he's he's never we've never steered each other wrong no so i was like if he's got such a gut for this that he thinks it's the right thing maybe i'm wrong and so i was like if you've got the energy for it and the capacity for it then then go for it so for him to then turn around and be like so i've spoken to johnny <laughs> <laughs> but it also it so it came at the start of last year and we hadn't gone back to doing weddings yet so you know at that time like i was fully enabled like weddings still hadn't started up after the pandemic again um and then i started to picture like trying to run able that has a like dragon investor and go and shoot weddings i was like i don't even know if that's possible like probably i'll just mm. have to give up photographing weddings which i was absolutely not going to do um so yeah it all also out. it's definitely not the right place to get investment it's a tv show primarily they're all lovely though the team are really really nice and do you know what was great about it is that it forced us to actually have a business plan yeah. because yeah. you can't actually go on there without a proper document, document which we yeah. never had because of how Abel started. So we had to have calls with our accountant being like, um, hey, Terry, how do we answer this question? Um, and he's like, I can't believe you don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> you know, we had to like, literally pick back through everything and actually come up with a proper business plan. So it was really lovely because it sort of put structure in underneath Abel that it yeah. hadn't had. I, 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 think, I think, I mean, what you've done is incredible, but I think if you'd have gone down that route and the dragon, it, it changes the whole dynamic of everything that it's about. Yeah. It and just I, goes against everything that you put on this card, which is slow down. Yeah, yeah that's it? just not what I wanted. I think, do you know, this is, that was the lovely thing about Johnny. I think you said you, it's really good to have those people, like connections in any freelance job that you might have like just other freelancers they don't have to be photographers but mm. people who are doing something different because most people work for somebody else nine to five monday to friday and they cannot understand you yeah they don't understand you no matter how hard they try you're always going to be a bit left field for them and a bit crazy and they're not really going <laughs> to understand where you're coming from um and i think johnny was such a good person because <laughs> Sometimes we, like in wedding photography, we're really bad at looking at the people whose rise is meteoric. We're really bad at looking at the people who just silently and diligently did the work. And um, Johnny's one of those people. Not like, that he's, he's not incredible. Like he, he, no, he's, he's definitely known in the industry, but you know, he's not, he's not shot to the top and speaking at every yeah. conference and invited to mm. elevate and nine dots and all that stuff. But like he just consistency, consistently yeah. putting yeah. out good work, consistently he's putting the hard work in. in the yeah, industry. that's the one. Able to, like, he, he's always up for helping other people. Like he's just the nicest guy ever. And his work's incredible. Like I just think we're so focused on like, look what this person achieved in one year. Mm, yeah. Like they did yeah. hundred million destination weddings and didn't die. Like yeah. let's look at them. <laughs> but the person who just like, how can you do it too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that is great. But actually, there's not a huge amount of looking at. Um, and I think you guys are doing it actually I think that's what another idea is doing is looking at people who have done all sorts of different things in different ways but yeah. people who just kind of quietly did their work um, and I, I think that's something Ash and I have a lot of respect for and that's what I want to be like at the end of my career I, want, I don't really want to be the award winning I, ne I never like, we literally applied for our first thing this year and we didn't yeah. win it so you know I'm Seven not going to be an award yeah. winning photographer um, but I just want people to be like she just kind of showed up and did her work um, I think that's what we want isn't it yeah. is to just be like no fanfare no pomp and circumstance just they just did a good job for a long time yeah and um, focus on the quality as well not the did it, not did the it accolade. in an authentic way yeah that's yeah. what I want to be and I've got much more you know it's like things like we can get so overexcited about things like destination weddings or photographing a dress that's worth 30k or whatever but actually if you're just diligent and quiet about things these opportunities do come in a really nice organic way when you're ready for them yeah yeah um, like there's so many things that in the beginning i think we kind of with that first like rush of ambition you kind of like gun after stuff don't yeah. you and when i've had those opportunities now as a much more seasoned photographer i'm like oh, i was not ready for that and i'm so glad i didn't get it because mm. then when you get that job as a more established photographer, it's just easy. Like I remember we did this, um, you were talking about Ben earlier. Mm. We got a venue that Ben had done a couple of years ago. And so going into this wedding, we were like, like, oh, yeah. you know, this is a Ben Wheeler venue. Like we shouldn't be, what are we doing here? Like this is yeah. why they booked us. Maybe we should just send Ben now. Like, no. <laughs> um, love Ben. Um, so we were quite daunted by it. And actually it was one of the easiest days at work I've ever had because it was like your experience level meets, um, you know, when, you, when you're meeting venues and the venue staff are used to 
a 250 person wedding and there's a huge budget and the florist is yeah. they spent thousands yeah. and actually you weren't experienced enough for that five years ago do you know what I mean all of the rigors of an event of that yeah. size yeah. so I think it's quite nice to just be patient about opportunities mm. yeah. uh, one of the ones please stop me if I'm rambling I'm no no this is great um <laughs> I just keep checking that everything's recording. <laughs> That's what I did. We're yeah. in uncharted, um, uncharted territories here. So. You know, my case in point is actually not a massive <coughs> venue. My case in point is the Dolomites because we only got to go this year. Um, and it's something that, you know, everyone. It's on my bucket list. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you're a wedding photographer. It's on everyone. It's like the Black Sand <laughs> yeah. Beach. It's like, what, how yeah. did you just go to Iceland? It's the new Iceland. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, but we had, uh, so obviously we massively respect Ed. Um, Ed's work for us is like ah, oh, that's yeah. like where we've always wanted to be like in terms of aesthetics that's what we're into we love his work and so he'd been to the Dolomites years ago because obviously he's such a trailblazing kind of guy isn't he and uh, I remember at the time us looking at that shoot and just being like I will never achieve that I will never get that opportunity and about five years later it happened and do you know what like so we got this inquiry for it was a northern Italy wedding and it was about four hours from the Dolomites and they just happened to mention in passing that they were going to the Dolomites after their wedding for a little mini moon and I was like hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally I literally was like um, I was like I don't know if you'll be interested but we will literally drive up there and do a little pre uh, post wedding day shoot for you if you're up for that and they're like oh really I was like yeah I'd love to like obviously but it's just an illustration of like in business it's so much about you taking the opportunities and you yeah. noticing it and you pushing for that and like it does it, i mean nine times out of ten it does not just fall in your lap like it's not it doesn't work like that and it was not great getting up the day after shooting a wedding yeah yeah, <laughs> to enjoy four hours. yeah. and then to then shoot the dolomites and then drive four hours to the yeah. airport so it's just making the most of opportunities though isn't it i think yeah. rebecca carpenter was a, a great example for that wasn't it when she came on when she's talking about making the most out of if that opportunity and everything yeah. and you, you talked about squeezing the lemon in one of the earlier yeah. episodes yeah. You know, squeezing the lemon squeezing that exactly. lemon yeah. squeezing yeah. that yeah. lemon to the last straw on his own accord just came up with that like just got that it's not it's Incredible. not it's not making that squeeze um, lemon that's what you get quite that's going to be on your headstone now <laughs> <laughs> eagle we doing back we he squeezed that really, lemon yeah, <laughs> with the dolomites we were really particular that we didn't want to just set up a style shoot and go and do it we were like we want that to be a part of our work and a part of a real couple that's booked us to be there um so yeah, we just kind of We're waited. weirdos like that. Where I know there's a really good reason for all of that stuff, like uh, to make an opportunity in a place and that's good, that's great. But we've always been like, I think if we're gonna do that, we want our couples to take us. Cause I want someone to be like, I'm going to the Dolomites and I trust you and I'm gonna pay you to go. And so we've waited for those opportunities. I think all that ties into everything that you've talked about there, but about just being authentic and genuine. Yeah. yeah. Like, because a styled shoot and paying for a model couple to go out there isn't it's not authentic to you. Yeah. But it um, was um it was the day that we shot um so the couple obviously had had their wedding the day before. So they were uh, Amy and Liam will probably hear this. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably a little bit hungover um the morning after. So they had to make this four hour drive that we were kind of making them do that day so that we could photograph them. Um, so when we arrived at the lake, we actually were there like a couple of hours earlier than them. And it was like beautiful sunshine. The light was just perfect. And we were messaging them. We were like, please say you're near because the light is like on. Not. It's happening. And obviously it's literally like a bowl surrounded by mountains, right? Yeah. And you know how complicated light is in mountains. It goes into shards and you can lose it. I had said to them the day before, like, we'll probably lose it really early because it will just go down behind the mountain. They were like, no, we... Um, we got up a bit later than planned, so we're nowhere near there at the moment. <laughs> yeah. so, so by the time they got there, it was raining. It was raining. So Ash and I had gone out on the lake and like we'd gone round on the boat, had a really nice romantic Take time. Take a bit selfie. Yeah. 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 While you know. sort of itching because the light's there. Yeah. You know how it feels when the light's yeah. there. And you can see it go. Um, and yeah. by the time they arrived, it had clouded over and it was raining. But still looked absolutely breathtaking. But, and, uh, and obviously, it was that moment in your head where you're like, but Ed had, in Ed's photos, Ed... Ed. Yeah, he's got that <laughs> Bloody Ed he is. He's got a lot to answer for, hasn't he, that guy? He's got some sort of contract with the weather. No, he would obviously be like, that's rot. I, he yeah. would have these challenges all the time too. But, And that's when you're just like, I, I was like, 
so glad that we were there as seasoned photographers yep. because we could handle like rain, mist, yeah. weird light yeah. and, and know what to do with it. And obviously also a real couple that actually don't really love having their photo taken. So um, I'm really, really proud of those photos because if nothing else, it's real, mm-hmm. you know. I think you were talking, you were talk, before we got into that point, you were talking about, like, again, there being genuine part and just kind of letting yourself, and it kind of made me feel like we've just looped all the way back around to this kind of giving yourself that time to rest and yeah. kind of just let things come to you and to be able to kind of go, oh, here's this thing, here's this thing, it's arrived, do I act on it, do I do something? Yeah. You know, and, and I, it makes me think of all of those photographers that will be listening that have gone and shot 55, 60, 70 weddings this year yeah. and are fried and have had absolutely no opportunity to let themselves rest or take on new ideas and new opportunities. And that is always one of the big things for me, that when you increase your prices to the point where you can shoot less, is one of the big things that nobody can prepare you for, which is you get a bit of time back to breathe and to kind of yeah. take new ideas on board. I don't know what's it's the GoPro. There. It's the GoPro, we're okay. Um, <laughs> you know, that, and, then, and then new things present themselves. If yeah. you're constantly like, in that rat race of like, I've got to shoot 70 weddings this year to keep up, like, yeah. You are never going to go anywhere else. You exactly. are only ever going to be that exhausted wedding photographer in August, September, October, because you've taken on way too much work. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I think um, also one of the things that I'd say to wedding photographers is learn to rest well. Mm, yeah. Le- yeah. Learn what makes you rest yeah. and learn to do it fast because it's not going to come very often. It's true. You need to be able to step yourself down really quickly, don't you? Yeah. When you get the opportunity. Yeah. We're so hour 47 oh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just going I'm just going you guys are getting the best of this by the way I'm like I just want to give you there's going to be some hard edits in this one <laughs> oh, fine it's great um, left field question you are a Stranger Thing character who would you be? oh obviously I'm 11 <laughs> <laughs> Does that make me her boyfriend? <laughs> um, I think you'd be Hopper. Do you reckon? Yeah, because oh, nice. he's really... I'll take that. He's really yeah, practical. I can see you as Hopper. And he seems really unemotional, but he'll just jump into the fire for someone who cares about that. That's oh, definitely you. And nice. I'm just 11 because of the mind game. So. Um, same question. <laughs> <laughs> same question to you, Eagle. <laughs> um, I thought Hopper. I actually thought yeah. Hopper beforehand. Hopper bros. Yeah. Yeah. You? Um, well, you, I can't be Hopper now, can I? Because you've both taken <laughs> Hopper. Yeah. We, we what have three options? hoppers. What are my other options? You've got Finn. We've got Devin uh, Gorgon. Dustin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dustin. Yeah. Dustin's a good one. Dusty Bond. Yeah, I yeah, think Dusty Bond. I think yeah, Dustin. Yeah, you've okay, got the charm. Dustin, you've yeah. got the charm. That's fine with me. I'll take Dustin. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> man. Um, man. <laughs> my questions are going. I've still got loads, but at the same time, I don't want to sort of like, hmm, waste your time. Uh, but we're here all day, but. <laughs> I only literally had one question because Igor told me he'd got all the questions. I was like, okay, mate, I'll just, I'll just turn up. My, oh, my question was like, what's the science behind Abel Burners? Like, what's the actual science? What actually happens here? Well, it just, a candle heats up the water and then it yeah. diffuses. You just there you go. Great question. Put the Great question. Thanks for that, guys. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah. quite scientific, though. This is, why, this is why I didn't write any questions down. <laughs> yeah, people are like, uh, I, I get emails, emails being like, I can't smell it. And I'm like, tell me where it is in the room. And they're like, it's on a shelf. Like up there, it's and I'm off. like, hot air rises. It's scenting your ceiling, and it didn't. It, I actually didn't realise how much I understood about like how hot air moves <laughs> yeah, yeah. until I started Ava. I was like, wow, I actually know quite a bit about that. <laughs> you need to put it under your nose. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had it. I literally had it, and it's just gone now. What's that? The question. Okay. <laughs> the you've, got, you've got your notes there. <laughs> That's probably why. That's probably why. I think, from a timing point of view, for today, we are going to have to. We're going to have to start bringing it in. Yes. Yes, we are. But. Yes, that was it. <laughs> we are, but you guys are, as you said, you've kind of like gone through the educational circuit and everything else and got a good knowledge and grasp of business and marketing in general. Any sort of like book you would recommend for anyone starting a business? To be fair, that's Simon Sinek, Start With Why. That was like a massive one for me. Um, Austin Cleon's books. Which were recommended recommended to us in a workshop with Fur, mm-hmm. um, so that's not an original recommendation, but they were really good. I think especially if people struggle with, uh, yeah, like feeling like they're doing something different to anybody else, yeah, because he's got the whole like still like an artist, yeah, yeah still like, like an artist, show your work yeah. and something else, yeah. but I mean, yeah. like he doesn't care. 
does he? No. It's, so it's really nice to. Yeah. Also, it's not a book, but the uh, another idea podcast. Yeah, is really good. Oh. <laughs> it's very inspirational, God, guys. Favorite guests <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to have you guys, and yeah, I can see that you you're definitely gonna. Oh, that's that one. Any guests that you'd recommend? Anyway, who would you like to see on this podcast? Ben Wheeler, Johnny Ed Piers, MP. Yeah. Johnny MP. Yeah. Where is Ed Piers now? That should be, that should be of, like a book. Yeah. Outside, <laughs> outside of the photography industry? Oh. Anybody? That's a little curveball. Good question. Do you know what? Talk to my old boss, Tom McGee. Tom McGee, okay. yeah. Um, he started a uh, HGV training company that is... HGV. Uh, like, it's yeah. in lorries. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. he was, like, 25. The guy is, like, a major inspiration to me. Um, and mainly because I've watched it be really difficult for him for a really long time. But he's he's made it. As, as all businesses are. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah, have a chat with him. Okay. Like, he's he's the real deal. You, know? right, well you, you, you messaged him for us. Yes. Oh, I'll be so like, you're going all, on a podcast, contact Tom. Details Sorry. Now. Yeah, yeah. Got more beeping, but we're okay. We're okay. Yeah. Do you want to throw the last question? Yeah. Just the, I mean, this is, kind of goes to both of you, really. And that is that if you could kind of rewind the clock to the 14-year-old earlier versions of yourself, what would your, what would those words of wisdom be? Invest in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I thought put it all in. Like, put put that everything you all, own into all crypto. All the time in the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, You've got a real answer, haven't you? I, <laughs> I think. wish I had realised earlier on that there is no yardstick and the one that you're told to measure yourself against doesn't exist. Yeah. If I'd known that at 14, I could have mm. saved myself a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think Amazing. ultimately, like, we're strong believers of, like, everything happens for a reason. And all the good, all the bad, all the awful jobs I've worked, like, they all have given me experience to run my own business. So I think <laughs> do the hard work would just be yeah. my advice. Like, just... Don't quit. Just keep going. Just keep turning up. Keep being consistent. You'll get there in the end. <laughs> well. it, it's been, it genuinely has been like incredible to see what you've built over the last few years and to kind of follow the journey of Able and, and to see it become a success. And um, I hope that you're both. I know, like we've talked. To, I was going to ask you earlier. Like, are you able to step back and kind of be proud of what you've achieved? Yes, I think this year it's been a little bit easier, hasn't yeah. it? Because. I think this year, because we've kind of gone away for weddings again, we've kind of had that time to like yeah. get back into photography and be like, oh man, like, so you have like Shopify um, is the platform we run our Able website on. So you can see that on your phone. So like there'll be days where we're shooting weddings and you're doing like a grand of sales at the same time. And you're like, this is the dream. It's, if only it was all just money in my bank. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it is a bit easier to, to stand back. And we, we do constantly have family like telling us they're proud of us and how well we've done. And actually like, you know, you, you guys, that was so lovely when we sat down and you said such nice things yeah. because we are really critical of ourselves and we, we aren't very good at being like, that was great, you know, well done. But when someone really doesn't know you that well and is like, we perceive that you've done really well, you're like, oh, that's what it looks like. Because obviously for you, it's just chaos, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's really lovely to hear especially people who who know a bit about some of the things that you do and like oh, I can is. I mean I can tell talking to, to you both today like that the struggle of getting this off the ground and and to the stage it's at now is is hard yeah it's like really hard <laughs> yeah. no one will ever know exactly how difficult that was yeah um but anybody that's run a business will know that those struggles are real um but look at what you've created it's incredible and yeah. you should both be incredibly proud of it's beautiful what you've done what you've built where it's going the journey that you're on you know um, yeah. Thank you, mate. Uh, a, a huge amount of respect for you, for you, for you both, genuinely. Oh, Likewise so to you with everything yeah, you guys honestly, have done. You've impressed. always been inspiration for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. Watching your all your destination weddings and like this, even this, this studio and the podcast. Like a year ago, I was showing Kat. I was like, look what look what Sam's done with his studio. Like, <laughs> we need to do that with the unit. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah, and like when Ash was like, oh, they they want us to be on the podcast. I was like, why did they? <laughs> yeah. So to me, you're like up there somewhere, you know. But I think this is why it's so nice to have this community. Is if someone can just be honest about the fact that they actually think you're doing super great. Yeah. You don't get to hear. Well, we, that we, we, we need that because we we both have conversations well we've had them recently like are we doing the right thing like can we, how long can we keep this going for you know without it generating any revenue like 
what's the longer term goal what's the bigger plan like honestly from looking at your podcast and when i saw you setting it up and like the production level like before i was listening to die over ceo like who isn't and to me it was on like the same level pretty much from your first episode like the way you obviously you've had i know that you've had problems with like the amount of time you can film for and stuff but now not now mate not anymore (laughs) creeping up to two hours (laughs) we've got pizza coming soon guys don't worry (laughs) don't worry i love yeah i love what you guys have done and like the level you've done it at uh, I hadn't looked at your Instagram, but I was on yours by chance, and your list Say of what? credentials is like unbelievable. It's a right I, stuff. It's I a right stuff. I definitely going to go for Paul. But I literally went this week. Okay, yeah. not ever. Sorry, not okay. Not okay. Ever. Um, but I just was on yours like last night or this morning, and I was like, your list of credentials is massive. You're like all the publications you've been in. You have got massive credentials. Yeah. Absolutely huge. <laughs> squeezing the lemon a lot. To be fair. <laughs> squeezing the lemon a lot. It's true. But you know, like, and I bet you just don't even think about that. But like, you. I think we're all guilty of that. Was it Harper's yeah. Bazaar or something that you were in? And I was just like, it's ridiculous stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've been on that as well. Just, just Congratulations. Saying. <laughs> Do you want to give me a list of credentials? It's okay. Come on. <laughs> but no, I think no, I think the point you're making is great. Though it's like we're all guilt. I think we're all guilty of not stopping to look at what we've achieved we yeah. just, it's like oh so it's the next thing the next thing and that's, that's the nature of being creative isn't it the downside yeah. is that we don't often stop and just go oh actually no look at, look at what we've built here look at what we've done yeah. Um, so yeah no thank you for your thank you for your kind it's nice to know that you see what we're doing as, as being a positive thing yeah, yeah definitely. it's going to be huge yeah. come on better be thank you so much for coming you guys have been absolutely amazing we're gonna tuck in some pizza yeah let's light the able burner let's light it up beat paul the father christmas up for not (laughs) not showing up (laughs) go and get a drink thank you guys really appreciate it you're amazing thank you